there. Hello, chat. I, I mean, it's a it's a safe bet usually when you say yeah. something. That's usually a safe one to go it's on with. The loof. Yeah. Uh, okay, they can hear us. Now. Oh wow, fancy smancy. Lou, yeah, I've been watching too much Fraser and. No. And no. Uh, yeah, she, Daphne no. says Lou all the time because she's pregnant. Okay, let's Spoilers see. alert. <laughs> all right, you guys. She's are, pregnant again. The last time she got pregnant, she it was the actress that was pregnant. Oh, that's right. They had to do one of the things. And they, they played it like they she, was she was fat. fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember Star Trek Voyager actress got pregnant. And they did like one right into the show. So she just had to start wearing a lot of loose fitting clothes for a while. Uh. Huh? All right. There we go. There we go. Mike, uh, oh, send her yourself so real quick. I'm so sad. I have like. What? No, I just, wait, 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 just sit where you're gonna sit, like so I, I can. Um, this, this is it. This okay. is the place. All right, cool. Uh, uh, I'm so sad because, like, I'm like ten, nine episodes away from finishing, but I know they're making more. But still, I'm kind of. Well, sad. the new thing's gonna be a different thing. You should, oh, you should still sure. be sad. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We are about ready to start. Let me uh, put this down here. I have tweeted. Well, I haven't. I mean, I'm not going that far. Put that here. Jeff, Mike, don't know the phasmophobia. It's spooky time. Now is the time. I, mean, I suppose it is pretty spooky. Um, what, why don't we? We should play the new Ghostbusters game, maybe. Sure. Oh, there's a Ghostbuster that. game, right? Greg Miller works that. on that one, didn't Let's he? See, I think he does a voice in it. Um, what are we? I heard that he oh, likes I thought he was the Ghostbusters. More involved in that. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he was say. Like, I think he like programmed for it. <laughs> he wrote the wow, Netflix Mike's board. saying that like voice acting's not real labor. Wow, can you believe this guy? <laughs> right on this episode, you have to say that. Wow, that's fucked up. Yeah, deal with it. Where are you? A cameo stand? What is, what is this? Oh, I thought you said cameo. I'm like, I'm absolutely a cameo stand, right? Cameo? No, yeah, no. Oh, okay. There's that. Maybe if cameo wore cameo's outfit. I was watching <laughs> Maximilian's uh play through the Street Fighter Five. Story mode. I think Sean yeah, actually oh, kind of it. That's yeah. very that's, funny. That's rough. But it uh, is hilarious. Like seeing like Cammy and her outfit, like having conversations with people, is hilarious. <laughs> like, she's like, like, the, she's like the part where she like outfit. pulls a package out of her ass. Yeah, she pulls a package out of us. <laughs> There's that part with Laura with like the largest cleavage in the world is kind of wrestling her little brother, and it's very weird. And just shoving uh, his face into it. Yeah, yeah totally, yes. totally normal siblings. It is just like, oh wow, that's disgusting. Five. Where do I yeah, find that's this? Gross. Where, do I, <laughs> where find I can see it so I can avoid it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Six million dudes. Street Fighter Five thing. Okay. I, I yeah, I watched that. I you watched rough. I don't. I didn't like it. I know it's funny, but I even kind of like Marvel's Cack on Infinite Story Mode, as cheesy as it was. I don't. I don't is the Nintendo? This is like you're talking another language to me. I don't. <laughs> I never. I never touch the story modes in any fighting game. Well, they're really good in like the Nether Realm games. Yeah. That's the only one hey, that I like. You guys hear play. me? Start chill. You guys hear that? I did hear that. Yes. Now let's see if chat heard it. I don't think they did. They will hear it in a moment. Like if there was like a streamer that would play that story mode, I would never play that. Hey. Like if Chat Bomb did a play through the story mode of Mortal you would unsubscribe. Kombat, unsubscribe. I wouldn't even. Yeah, I wouldn't even touch that. You'd unsubscribe and then you'd make angry posts about how our Giant Bomb has been a shame. <laughs> <laughs> All they, all they do is play Street Fighter Five story mode now. <laughs> my friend, my friend likes Giant Bomb stuff, but he doesn't like the mm. gaming stuff. He feels like mm. it's the best, it's the best Giant Bomb ever because they, they do so much no gaming stuff. I love it. I, like, I don't understand why all these people living across the country don't do more content with each other in the same room. <laughs> well, yeah, let's everybody we'll... should move to San Francisco for, for me. <laughs> it's so cheap over there. All right, I think. I think we're ready. I will uh, tweet real quick, but um, what, do I, what, do I, what do I normally forget to do? Tweet is you, you normally forget to do, and oh, then yeah. the music. So you already got the those music, to cover, yeah. Jeff. Okay, wow. Uh, do you have stream elements open for Super Chats? Mike, do you have your local recording going? Shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, people are go coming and going like, oh, there's Jan in jail. Uh, he said he wasn't in the chat. 
But I haven't seen him not behind bars yet, so I'm like hesitant to believe. So I don't exactly. know anything because I didn't have time to listen to the to the podcast. I don't know what's going yes, on. Yes, I do have stream so. elements open. Sorry. Oh, nice, okay. <laughs> nice. What what exactly happened? He like had jury duty and he no, thought he did it. He thought he thought he did, and then he wasn't like getting called, so he thought he was okay. But it turned out it was actually his partner that did have it, and he told her that she didn't, and so then she was supposed to be there. Basically, he caused um, his partner to be in potentially a contempt of court uh, <laughs> for not showing up for jury duty. And Your so he, so fucking I think he had to go and try to like rectify the situation, essentially. He had to go and, and like appear there and be like, explain that it's not her fault. If you're going to put anyone in jail, put me in jail. That's yeah, what I'm one assuming. of those things. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. Question. Who was it that you guys accidentally raided who was problematic? Oh, was it uh, anybody I told you to, was it? No, it was, uh, it was a uh, middle ditch, the guy that was on. Um, uh, Silicon Valley. We're, we're Wait, like, what? Yeah, we were like, uh, yeah, I don't know who suggested it, but we're like, all right, fine. And like, is that the a problematic guy? I'm like, no, that's T.J. Miller. He's the problematic guy from there. Yeah, turns, oh, turns out, out there's more than one. Turns out there's more than one. Wait, Middle Ditch <laughs> is problematic? No. Yes. Yeah, Why? he. Uh, yeah, I think he uh, sexually harassed people. No. Why are you? I don't know. I, don't know. I can't, I can't really keep him. I can't keep it straight time. anymore. Oh. I can't. I can't like any people now. I know. I should just start streaming when I know that you guys are going to end a thing. Yeah, that absolutely. I'm but that would be a very good strategy for me. I'm yes. always streaming. With, I'm streaming. I'll, and I'll be. I'll, stuff at this I'll act so surprised. I'll be like, "Oh wow, thank you for the rain." Giant <laughs> I got bump. you, Mike. If I'm in chat, I'm like, "Oh wow, Mike is streaming." I just I roll up the chat. Chat yeah, loves you. They do. Well, they do. Hey, you guys. Hey, here? Okay, I am ready. Should I count us in? Yes. All right. Get Let's out of here, you mods. Go back to your mod hole. Get back in wow. the mod hole. Oh, you can't any voice. I don't mod like it. Hole. Get back in the mod hole. Uh, okay. Five. Okay. Four. Three. And eat ass. Three. Hey, you, you guys, guys hear me? me? Start cheering now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's get this on our way. Yeah. Oh, woof, woof. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look, it was Christian's fault because he popped back in here and it gave me a notification. I was like, what? Get the hell out of here. The show started. It's an echo in the music. <laughs> Oh, there's oh my go. god. Okay. Okay. <laughs> my bad. Not my fault. Not my fault. Oh, let me First see. Let me, episode. Let me identify. Why is it coming through my mic? That's okay. When my uh okay, let me see here. This is my first this is my first time doing a podcast, so <laughs> <laughs> uh let's try one more time. Alright, alright, we got this. I'm not gonna lie, at hey, first I did you forget guys hear me? Okay, let's See, there's that. <laughs> oh, we're restarting. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're doing this again. Don't worry, everybody. Let's see here. Routing. Why is that chat my music? You know, Jeff, just looking at how many different devices are here, I think I found the problem. <laughs> Look at all this shit. Well, that's the, all the buses for the GoXLR. <laughs> like, that's not, that's just that, those are, that's one device. It's just that gives you a bunch of different stuff. It uh, seems like it's not helping. <laughs> It well, seems like it's hey, making it more you guys me? It's only not helping because the shit won't save, and I need to figure out why that's not working right. anymore. But, all right, let's see. Hey, you guys hear What is, okay, you know, let me see, what mic am I using? Property, oh, okay, broadcast stream mic, and then routing. Hey, you guys hear me? Yes. There we go. Okay, all right, uh, I'm ready, Mike. I'm going to count us in, and here we go. Five, four, three. Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now! <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get this over with! <laughs> And I am a Nintendo. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I am a Nintendo. And we are the last of the Nintendo. Today, the Bayonetta 3 voiceover 
controversy. Switch Sports keeps switching between working and not. And we are going to talk about a JRPG that we would still like to see on the Switch. Jeff, you've had a busy day. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I um, First thing I did today was uh, play a little... Uh, well, I played that game. I can't post, talk about that, playing that one yet. And then I played... Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm like, you didn't tell me, so I was, I was like, everybody keeps like jumping around what game they're talking about. I'm almost certain everybody's talking about Gotham Knights. <laughs> you do not have to confirm or deny, but like, you're the fifth person today. He's like, I can't talk about this game I'm playing. Well, I was like, I'm like, yeah, I definitely played that for a, wi a bit, and then I um played uh, NBA Street Volume Two over the internet as a test oh. for work, and got that working. So uh, I'm like, okay, time to do some content with that. Uh, and that was good. And then since then, it's been podcasts. Uh, well, talking over a movie. I just watched Hellraiser for the first time. That was a fun time. I've never seen the movie. I actually don't really know what that movie is about. Yeah, I, I didn't I guess either. The guy races hell. I uh, yeah. Well, I mean, yes. Essentially, I guess they do so uh, in a roundabout manner. Yeah. Uh, it sounds it, like you had an existential crisis when you pondered if he actually raises hell or not <laughs> there for a second. I, I'm like, yeah. Does, does that count as racing hell? I suppose it does. I um. I was I was surprised. I was not expecting it to be about what it's about, and it was very entertaining and interesting. It's a good movie. I'm surprised it holds up as well as it does. So uh, that was a film in 40s live. We did that. You can uh, get the MP3 of us talking over that pretty soon once I send that over to Jan, um, and that'll probably be up sometime later this week or whatever. So if you want to pair that up with that movie and watch that over the, ho the spooky holiday season, that's always a good time. But then, yeah, it's been going nonstop, so now I'm ready to do Nintendogs. Uh, how about you? How was your day going? I'm tired, man. I don't know. It's been busy. There's a lot going on. We have our event coming up soon there's like a bunch of other things i'm trying to to get done and it's only tuesday it seems like there's just so much news and things happening this week this is a wild week already and we haven't even gotten to that silent hill nonsense tomorrow yeah and then it's like even before that happens it's like it seems like we might be getting silent hill 2 part one i'm like well, what the fuck mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm ex I'm a little exhausted. I took a little nappy nap. The Guardians, uh, I was about to say blew it today. That's rough. They they outperformed all expectations, but that was a bit of a bummer. They lost. They're done playing baseball now until it's springtime. So that's sad for me. But hey, what are you gonna do? I mean, they lost the series they were supposed to lose. It's never. It's still never great. Yeah, but you're, they were never they were supposed to three. win that one. But yeah, they we're up two one. Yes, it was, it was feeling good for. A they could have won it then, absolutely. That makes and it today hurt was more. of course the one where we like did the worst. Right? Mm -hmm. like, this is our worst showing we had. So, yeah. oh man, people are just dragging you. Uh, some they're saying Grub loves thirty FPS. Grub is thirty FPS, and then Grub makes love at thirty FPS. I mean, anything faster, that's just gonna destroy things. Like, yeah. that's just too much. Yeah, absolutely. I can't thrust that fast. Are you kidding me? I'm old. I'm did an old man. Did you see? Because you've been busy. Did you see the uh, the saucy Callisto Protocol tweet? No, I, I didn't. Yeah, they say they're like, yeah, just a reminder, our game's coming out soon. And by the way, it'll run at sixty FPS. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, that's where we are now. Mac. All right. I. uh don't know how I feel about that, but go for it. Whatever. Well, I feel better about it if it wasn't the uh, the the crunch duty yeah. or the guy. Right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, I, I, game. It feels weird. Gaming feels. Like, it feels like a weird time in gaming. Like there's um. It feels like there's impending doom around the corner for everything uh, about this industry, uh, and yet games still keep coming out. And that yeah, we get hung up on the, some small things. Like I get hung up on it too. I am hung up on this. 30 frames per second stuff. Man. Even as someone who plays a lot of games on Switch, I'm hung up on it. So it's uh, whatever. That's that's what we signed up for by doing this job. I've noticed this for a long time now. Basically, ever since I stopped being like a kid and played video games, video games can often make you feel bad when you're not playing the video mm -hmm. games. When you're like following the discourse and you're getting, you know, worried and stressed about things you're like, oh, video games are in a rough spot. Then you just play the video games and it turns out that's actually still fun. Yes, um, that's where I'm at, too. Speaking about messy situations involving video games, this Bayonetta 3 voiceover controversy just keeps on going and going and getting weirder and weirder. So, you know, Helena Taylor came out uh, on Sunday and was saying that, you know, she was lowballed. She made this tweet. It went viral, this video. She was lowballed, only offered $4,000 total to come back to voice Bayonetta in Bayonetta 3, uh, she was upset. She called for a boycott. She specifically kind of called out Jennifer Hale, who's replacing her and saying, you're not Bayonetta, right? Uh, and then today, we, we we kind of sort of had the other side of the story 
kind of come out from these reports from Jason Schreier at Bloomberg and Andy Robinson at VGC saying, well, what 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 we hear is that Platinum offered her like three to four thousand dollars per session for like four sessions or something like that. And then she came back asking for six figures and residuals um, and, you know, Helena's denying this. So we are now in the, you know, he said, she said part of this thing. Yeah. And it's just getting messy. And I have I, I'm having a hard time parsing what I even think about it anymore. Because, let's look, I don't know how much voice actors make. I don't even really know how much they should make. 4,000 was obviously wrong. Yes. But it's like, uh, is 20,000 right? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe. Is it, six figures right? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not, like, I don't know either. Uh, I think um, I would like them to be paid more. I, it would be nice if there was a uh, more aggressive union. I mean, there is a union, and it would just be nice if there was a more aggressive union fighting for a certain base pay so that uh, you could avoid these situations. I bet maybe some of this stuff does lead to something like that in the future. Um, I, uh, I I don't know. I can imagine that uh, Helena Taylor is uh, still feeling a little bit like uh, I. It's not that much money in the grand scheme of things of how much these monies make, and um, I, I think it would have been fair. May, I, maybe she would have been willing to negotiate. Maybe she wasn't. Maybe that was the problem. Uh, all we could do is still speculate, even though we have what is essentially two sides of the story now. Um, and I could imagine if you were saying, okay, $4,000 for th four to five sessions, and you're like, okay, well, you know, that, that's pretty good, but what if they get everything they need in the first two sessions and suddenly you, they don't call you back for that third, fourth, or fifth? Um, Can it work like that even? Yeah, I mean, who knows? I don't I don't know. Like, don't if, know. if they yeah. don't need more, do they, they don't need more, and then why would they pay you? Um, so I, I, I can still imagine that, yeah, she would probably wanted to get more money guaranteed up front. Who doesn't? Uh, but all that said, these are documents that people have looked at that seem to say, hey, what you, the way that you phrase this doesn't seem accurate, which always felt like the other shoe was going to drop here and we were going to hear more information. Now here we are. We did get more information. Um, and I, I, I think I'm with you. I'm just kind of more confused than ever and kind of want to be like, I don't, I don't need to have an opinion on this. I might, just, that, I might just play the game. That is actually kind of the big thing here is that luckily we don't really need to take a side here. We obviously don't really know uh, what happened here. And, you know, I think everybody reacted very emotionally at first when Helena's first video came sure. out. If yeah. anything, the only backlash to it was the fact that she went after Hale, who's, you know, this beloved figure. Right. Uh, by the way, she's liked a bunch of like the tweets kind of like coming out now, sh sharing that platinum side of it. So, you know, not surprising that that's, you know, the side she's on, but she is firmly in there. I mean, I think Helena was definitely really upset with the way it went down. This is, it's not like she's done. She's like super prolific. Bayonetta is I think as far as I know, her big role. Uh, so if it like went bad, I can imagine she is very upset about that. And I don't necessarily blame her for that. But I do think, you know, if you are looking for me to absolve you of guilt for playing Bayonetta 3 because you are a big Bayonetta fan, you've been waiting for this game. Yeah. I I hereby absolve you. You are allowed to buy Bayonetta 3 or you're, no, you're free to not. I yeah, really yeah. don't care. And if you want us to... um be a certain level of of holding the corporation accountable i would love that's to, happened I, I i right i think it's happened to the extent that i feel comfortable participating in and beyond this i i just it's hard to have like i'm i am not a, a labor expert in this field so i just don't know what i would yell anymore i think, I think yeah it's happened we they were sort of all this stuff was aired the law the dirty laundry is out there uh, these companies will have to consider more carefully how they present things to voice actors in the future maybe things will be better or maybe things will just get more silent I, I i don't know no one knows the answer here and i certainly don't either i mean yeah it's awkward because obviously like i i, I could see the game companies feeling like they're back into some corner because you know well yeah. i'm the voice of bayonetta you have to negotiate with me and maybe they think that's unfair and that's yeah, how but making maybe they that's making stuff is like yeah that's yeah that's i just mean part that's, of making stuff I wonder if, because, you know, like movies, like people sign these multi picture like contracts. Right. And part of it is sometimes maybe about making sure that you lock them in for a deal uh, before things can really escalate. Sometimes you still have to adjust it. I wonder if like voice actors are going to start getting paid for like multi game deals or something like that at some point. Yeah, I would imagine. That. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a whole thing. And 
you know, I mean, gosh, voice acting is 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 such a it, it is this interesting issue because we had these negotiations, we had all the stuff with the unions not too long ago, and she is in the union here. So I don't know, do they get involved? Do they mediate? I don't know how that community feels, but I mean, I, it certainly seems like the community has mostly come out to support Hale because uh, everybody loves Jennifer Hale. I even said this before that people love her to an extent that I bet it just makes Helena even more upset, right? It's the mm-hmm. Olga Pataki syndrome. Yes, yeah, and um. I, I think that uh, the the union probably will get involved, but it will probably be, uh, hey, come to us. Don't go air this stuff out. And they'll probably have something to say to Helena Taylor as well, um, which is, uh, you know, maybe not exactly what uh, Helena wanted here. But it, it, it does seem like one like one of the big issues here is that she misrepresented the uh, the contract, at least as far as we know, as, as what we've seen from the story. So. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to play Bayonetta three. Um, we'll, we'll see. And I, I wish that Helena Taylor was still, still doing the voice. And at that point I'm like, okay. And now my opinion about this particular matter feels like it's cut off. Like I have nothing that, else that, to think about this. Yeah. That is kind of like the bummer here for me. It's like, I, you know, I do actually just wish she was still the voice of Bayonetta. I yeah. think she did a very good job of it. I thought that she made it a pretty unique thing. So the fact that it couldn't come together, it was sad. And then the fact that it's gotten, you know, sort of ugly like this. I don't know if it's sad. Like, again, what do I care? But it is sort of bizarre, uh, I suppose. Yep. All, all right, then. So uh, that's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what kind of impact that actually has on the like. Because this game's coming out soon. It's time to get people excited about the game. And now it seems like you can't even think about Beta 3 without thinking about this voiceover concern. So it'll be interesting to see. If uh, Bayonetta kind of overcomes that, I imagine it'll probably be fine. I mean, you know, Bayonetta is not this giant thing. Anyways, there are some people, too, who are like who maybe had like weird ideas of how much money Bayonetta makes. Well, like, well, this is how, you know, well, how much Taylor's she res- partly responsible for that as well. In her first video, she said four hundred and fifty million dollars before merchandise. And that's just not true. <laughs> yeah. How much Bayonetta merchandise is there? Yeah, that too. Yep. Yeah. All those body pillars. Uh. Millions All right, dollars. Jeff. Millions and millions. Uh, Switch Sports had an update that accidentally broke the game. So yes. Nintendo had to yeah, roll back that update. It took the uh, And then the online wasn't available for a bit there. Everything is okay uh, now. Really, just a funny little episode, especially when compared with all the Bayonetta stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one uh, where, you know, Nintendo Switch Sports, a relatively successful game, um, one that continues to sell very well, even if we're not all talking about it. Um, and they, they put it out there and they put out this update that just broke it. And what, I guess what was happening is you would try to start a match online and then it would just shut the game down or shut the, shut down the switch, something along those lines. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's weird. Um, th- this fix did come out relatively quickly though, I suppose. Yeah. So, you know, this thing, you know, it doesn't happen too often with Nintendo games. They don't have too many updates that just break the game. So I think everybody's kind of lulled it. I mean, I don't can't imagine there's a super uh, giant community of people playing Switch Sports online, Jeff. Right? Not. I mean, I bet there are people who do it a lot, and I bet it's a, a dedicated community. I just don't. It's obviously not some massive thing. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody. Hey, if you are watching live, we appreciate it. If you could hit that thumbs up button, it always helps more people find the show and makes us feel just so much better about ourselves. If you want to send in any super chats, we will read those on the air before the end of the show, I promise you. Uh, But first, Jeff, we've got some questions from our Discord community. Are you ready for this? Do, 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 do. Uh, I'm ready for this. Let's go. I'm opening it What's your favorite sports jam? Um, that one's, that one's up there, right? What's that even called? It has a weird actual name. It should just be called Sport Jam. That is the Sports Jam, huh? I mean, I think Cotton Eye Joe is better. That's a good sports jam. I don't know why it's a sports jam, but it just is because it's high energy and they play it at the sports things constantly. So I like the I, um, the basketball theme song. I don't think that's ever been on a sports jam album, but I just remember the SNL sure. sketch where um, Tim Robbins uh, – was uh, doing the lyrics to that song, and it was like, no, 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 basketball, boom, 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 pass me the ball because I'm gonna dunk it. And they were just singing that over and over again, and it gets in my head all the time. It's That's good. fantastic. It's good. 
All right, Jeff, you ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> I just said it again. How do we get on this tangent? This is how we got on it. Do it again. Dr. Sus says, hey, Jeff, Series S made Nintendo not release Metroid Prime Remake Grub. And Mike, I'm going to Disneyland, Minotti. The whole Bay of Voice thing happened and some actor talked about getting residuals. It doesn't seem like it's the rules, as VAs are not usually driving sales. Who in the industry usually gets residuals? Does anyone except publishers and studio owners get to enjoy when a game is commercially successful beyond expectations? Jeff, you probably know more about this than I do. Uh, I'm going to assume not very many people get residuals just across the board. I bet it happens more frequently at indie studios, right? You probably uh, you can't yeah. pay a lot up front, so you say, hey... We'll give you points on the back or whatever how that works in uh in movies um uh, and yeah so you probably get residuals for working uh, a lot on a smaller project but for bigger studios they're like we're just gonna pay a lot of money up front and we, we're, we're gonna it's gonna be work for hire and we're gonna own, own that stuff um i bet residuals is a very infrequent means of of paying employees uh and paying uh, contract workers when it comes to Activision and Nintendo and Ubisoft and Microsoft and Sony and all those. That sounds right to me. Benji Glasskey says, hey, shittiots. You hear that? He uh, combined idiots and shit. That's a portmanteau. He did it. Uh, what meme words do we think Mario will say in the movie? Could he say poggers or based? I don't think they're going to have Mario say poggers, Jeff. Here's what I they're going to might... say. Or you, yeah. you go first. What do you think they're going to no, do? No, no. I want to know. Please. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Yes. Um, Mario is going to get the fire flower and Luigi's going to say that's lit. Okay. Yes. That's the exact level I was thinking yes. might happen. Yeah. That sounds right. Uh, I think Mario might dab. Didn't they, one of them already dab already, actually? Didn't Luigi dab in a game? Hasn't that already happened? Yeah, I don't I think, know. Yeah. Anymore. Definitely feels like he has. Yeah. That sounds right. Yes. I think that it's lit thing is right. If not that, it's going to be that level. Right. Of, uh, someone's saying no cap. So, like, he loses his hat and, like, no cap, Mario. Yeah, totally. No, maybe. I don't know. I don't think they're going to be gaming-ish. Maybe he's going to say, let's fucking go. <laughs> <after he's> <laughs> yeah, my favorite again. meme is just the word fucking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Bowler says, hey, Nintendogs, Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope is coming out in a couple of days. If they made a third game, which Nintendo characters would you want to see have a rabbit version make an appearance? Before you say it, they had Wario and Luigi. They did? Was that, was that in, like, the DLC or something? Because he has a picture of them, so I guess they existed. No, I yeah, don't I remember so. them. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Uh, well, they didn't do Daisy yet, so maybe they'll do that. Uh, or, I don't know. Pa Pauline's been getting a glow up. I don't know if she's about to get a rabid version. Uh, you know, we could just do our usual in, in, in meme on it and say Booster or uh, Boshi from Mario RPG. We'll get Bowser Boshi or yeah. uh, Rabid Boshi. That would be fun. I'd like that. Yeah. They sh it should be like Rabbit King Koopa, and you should look like how he did in like the cartoon, and it should really confuse a lot of people. Yeah, just really yeah. Uh, confuse those shows. My they kids, my kids would not be confused. They fully watch that show now. So uh, they apparently Rabbit, uh, Waluigi, and Wario were in the original game towards the end. I do not remember. Yeah, I don't them. remember that either. <laughs> Yeah, everything about that. Uh, I think somebody on Bombcast said like, you know, it remind uh, Kingdom Battle reminded me of a. Uh, you know, Mario RPG. And I'm like, yeah, except without like the memorable original characters or, uh, hey, you know, a decent story. Rabid Peach is memorable. Rabid Peach has been flanderized already. Her whole shtick is sure. that she's like a millennial who's obsessed with her phone. Yes. That is the joke. Yes, you're right. They they didn't do much more with it. But like, I don't know. It's still, we look at it. I'm like, I get, I get that joke. I understand that joke. So I'm OK. Mm -hmm. I don't like like so, you know, we'll talk about more, but I have been playing uh, Sparks of Hope and I do like it, but I am still just like confused about the presence of the rabbits, especially since like they, they've gone even more out of their way to de rabbit by them. Like they don't have that manic energy that they used to have. Right. Like that was the whole bit. They would just con they would just randomly start one would Screaming. scream and then the rest would scream. They don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. They have voiced dialogue now. They just kind of talk. They're just kind of normal. So. And it's like, why are these rabbits, especially when like the new original character here, that edge is just like a rabbit for some reason. And she's not based on a Mario character. See, I'm, I'm and... not confused about the presence of the rabbits, Mike. I'm confused about the presence of the Mario characters. It feels like they're <laughs> unnecessary here. 
They feel like the Final Fantasy characters in Kingdom Hearts is what is what's happening here. Well, now I understand that you just don't know what the fuck you're talking about. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, so there we go. I don't think the final the Final Fantasy characters still matter in uh, in Kingdom Hearts. To be clear, they stopped using them as much once they had enough original characters. Then people kind of got mad, so they brought them back for cameos in the DLC in Kingdom Hearts Three. Is what they did. But I liked I liked when the Final Fantasy characters would show up. It was fun, Jeff. But uh, I don't know. You, you, Dan Riker showed you Edge, and you seemed uh, as nonplussed about her as I do. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about Edge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever. I'm thinking. Uh, I just don't know why she exists. Yeah, I don't get it either. Um, it's I mean, whatever. You, it's a Ubisoft game. That's why she exists. Like that seems Man. to be it. And maybe it was also, we need more of our original characters so we can market that beyond Nintendo. Maybe and, that is why. And they, maybe they just needed that type of character and going to Nintendo again to ask permission to use a certain character in a certain type of way was probably like such a headache. Like, what? Just make it a new, make it our own thing. Make this just yeah. a, this one's just a rabid. How about that? Like, are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Well, thanks. I hate it. Uh, Jimmy Nintendo says, hey, Nintendogs, why do you think Valve released the Portal Companion Collection on Switch? It feels random to do it in 2022, especially with the release of the Steam Deck. Thanks. I mean, from my understanding of Valve, Jeff, this could only happen if a random group of people at Valve decided they wanted to do it and then <laughs> did it, right? Like, Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I suppose it's possible that someone from Nintendo could have gone to Valve. They are in the same city, Nintendo America and Valve. Yeah. And said, hey, would you like to bring the Portal games here? And wow. then someone, a group of people at Valve, would have had to decide well, collectively to go and do it. Well, I guess, I don't. Th- someone's right. I don't think Valve actually developed those, huh? Right, they no. Probably it, did it, outsource it was it. outsourced, but that still, that still has still to be work. over. Yes, and, it, and any Somebody work at Valve, at Valve has to be done by sort of a, 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 a force of will from the collective. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Like, yeah, I don't even know what you call it. A force of will from some sort of collective within the collective. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I still don't quite understand how, how it all works there. I uh, remember when everybody was like really impressed with the way they do things. Then like that's that process uh, stopped producing video games and people didn't like that process very much from the outside. <laughs> uh, let's see here now. OK, from Hosp. Hey, yo, dogs. Hearing Jeff talk about Tro Freaks got me wondering what's the best non feature on the Switch? Gotta say, I'm a big fan of them skipping trophies and achievements. Huge distraction while playing. That's interesting. I don't like. I, don't, I think I'm good either way. If like trophies, if I had them, or if I uh, didn't have them, that wouldn't bother me too much. But yeah, that's that's a good question. What is something that's not on the Switch, and you're kind of glad that it isn't? Hmm. Hmm. That's you have tough. any ideas here, Jeff? That is tough. He kind of took the good one. Like trophies would be one, although it doesn't really. Uh, bother me personally, per se. I, you know what? I guess I am kind of glad that it doesn't try to be a media device. Um, it doesn't oh, try yeah, to do that stuff poorly. I guess it has Hulu. That was uh, fact. The, some of the old Factor Five people worked on that. Um, uh, that that part of Hulu to switch. But I, I'm I'm glad it doesn't try to be. Oh, oh, plug this in, and then. Uh, you can watch all your media through here, and we, we can do all this extra stuff, and we're going to take up um, space in the UI so you can easily get to your Netflix app. I'm, I'm glad they don't try to do that. That's uh, a, a sort of relief that you just you turn on the switch, and here's the last games you played, and that's that. That's it. It's pretty cool. That sounds good. Uh, John says, hey, Mike, finally giving us brown people some sort of representation minority. You're welcome. And Jeff, finally put us Canadians on the map. Grub. If any Nintendo Switch game from 2017 to 2019 should get DLC, which one would it be? I'd want a proper expansion for Luigi's Mansion 3. That would be cool. There's a part of me that's like, just do four. Know, just make, just make four. So like, through a lot of them did get DLC. Uh, Three Houses got its thing. Uh, Breath of the Wild got its. I was kind of disappointed we didn't get more with Mario Odyssey. They added some like some Luigi balloon mode thing that never looked uh, enticing to me. If that was actually here's like a new kingdom, like, you know, it's just like one new kingdom that I would have been uh, pretty excited about that. So maybe I'll just pop out here and say that for a long time. We, we everyone's wondering why we didn't get Mario Kart DC DLC and we just got it. Mm-hmm. So it could happen, Jeff, at any moment. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying. Like, I think a lot of the games that I wanted to have DLC did get it. 
uh breath of the wild got dlc and um um yeah. at kingdom battle got dlc and battle got TS- dlc tons for uh, uh smash brothers i mean did arms get dlc would have been nice if there's maybe more characters added to arms afterwards i feel like it must have gotten something i think it got maybe a f- not. couple of characters but that might have been the um post-release sort of uh dripping of characters that they had already finished thing that nintendo often does um i i I don't know i i guess the dlc that i would want is for mario golf uh super rush to get um you know a a couple of major things but really i just want them to have a tournament mode so -hmm. that we can go online start a tournament with a bunch of other players and play against them whenever that was such a good online feature in the 3ds one wish they would have had it here uh, and if it needed to be DLC, whatever, I'll, I would pay for it. Bench JC says, hey, Jeff and Mike, how are, how are you all feeling about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? They are getting very close, and as more time goes on, the more excited I get. I wish I was with you, Bench. I don't think about it too much right now, to be yeah, honest. I'm not thinking about know. it too much. I, I will pay attention once it's here. I will mm-hmm. give it, I will see what people are saying, and at that moment, I will decide whether or not I'm going to get into them. The likely answer is no, because I'll just say I should go back to Pokemon Legends and relearn how to play that game, but actually just go back to that. All right. Plus, like, I mean, there's so many good RPGs right now. I'm still like I'm 50 hours into Xenoblade, I think, and still really liking that. And then now I need to go and finish Sparks of Hope. I've been enjoying that. I want to get uh, Trails from Zero. I haven't even like got that one yet. And that's like, oh, and there's a Pokemon coming out. And frankly, like I'm less excited about those than these other things right now. You know, Pokemon Sword, Sword and Shield was just so kind of forgettable to me. And yeah, they're doing some things different, but we also kind of thought that about Sword and Shield. And part of me is like, I don't know how different this is really going to feel. I bet it could still be fun. I'm hoping I'm sort of pleasantly surprised. But hey, I didn't give a shit about Xenoblade Chronicles 3 when it was coming out. I didn't start it for yeah. a long time. Then I ended up really liking it. So yeah, it's cool to not care about a game and then suddenly care about it. Yeah. Velocity Prime says, good evening, Nintendo Ghouls. For spooky season, one must know what is the scariest moment in a Nintendo game. Read Dead's in Ocarina of Time, perhaps the piano in Mario 64. Uh, easy answer for me is actually the bathtub jump scare from Eternal Darkness, Jeff. That really oh, got yeah. me. Yeah, I just saw I that I, a little bit ago. I think I even played it like the demo at a GameStop and it's still... Whoa. really got me yeah like i was still like i was in like a crowd store with a lot of lights everywhere with a lot of noise and it still really spooked me how old were you you think it was when it came out so it was like coming out so they had the demo uh so what was that like 2002 so i would have been 15 i would have been like 15 or 16 yeah too old to be that scared oh um the uh the eel from super mario 64 going under the water i was scared of that thing forever it was just it's so uh, um Creatures swimming beneath the surface of a body of water is very scary to me in general. That mm. game really was like, no, you got to keep swimming down, keep swimming down. And by the time you're like almost running out of air, not almost, but you would imagine, like you felt like you were. Um, is like, now you have to deal with this giant eel that's going to come out and attack you. Yeah, that got me. Kamiya's block buttons. <laughs> that's right. It says, hello, Mike. Beware my rules, Minotti. And, Dre- and Jeff, brainless insect grub. Glad the backlash over the 480 12 gigabyte caused NVIDIA to change course. I think you'll both agree that calling two products with large differences in performance two revisions of the same GPU was ridiculous and inaccurate. You agree, right, Jeff? No, I do not. You right ahead, you asshole. <laughs> By that same logic, calling the Game Boy and Game Boy Color two revisions of the same console is similarly ridiculous I, and inaccurate. What? No. I do agree with this because the 480... 12 gigabyte is a different pro- processor than the the 4080 oh 16 God. gigabyte. So that's why it's absurd. If it was just a 4080 with four gigabytes less of memory, this would never have been an issue. But that's not what it is. I can't do it right now. I can't do this right now. Beef Hammer says, hate Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, ready for Palpatine to show up again at the end of Andor Grub. Uh, so uh, how many more years until like... Star Wars feels like they're allowed to be in on the joke and make a somehow blank blank has returned joke. Um, it, to me, it, it well, listen, who knows what's going to happen with Andor because Andor is the best thing that they've done so far under Disney, uh, except for maybe Last Jedi. Honestly, it's really up there. Um, but it's also not getting nearly as many viewers as fucking Baby Yoda and uh, <laughs> and fucking uh, Boa Fett becomes a cr- uh. shitty crime lord. 
I um, love that you only, by coincidence, I don't mean you do this intentionally, but you only like the Star Wars shit that gives you a good reason to have a chip on your soul shoulder. <laughs> you know? I know. Yeah, no, absolutely, Mike. I've noticed, too. Uh, I was not, <laughs> that's not how I felt while watching epi- that sixth episode. I was just in heaven, and then I started seeing the headlines. The show's not getting as many viewers. I'm like, God damn it. Fuck you. Why do Star Wars fans fucking suck? Um, it. Uh, it seems like if there's like this offshoot of of uh, Tony Gilroy and some of these other creators doing actually good, interesting shows, they might get away with the joke sooner. If this show uh, like is somehow considered a failure, and John Favreau and um and uh, uh, David Filoni get that much more power, will they will never have a sense of humor about that ever? Well, maybe you kind of understand how I feel liking Solo, <laughs> but. Uh... <laughs> Actually, that was right. different because also the critical response to Solo was bad. So I just really felt weird liking Solo. <laughs> Solo is is fine. I just have very yeah. specific criticisms of it. They have nothing really to do with the quality of the movie itself. Exactly. Anyways, that was your nickname. My nickname was Mike Starcraft Ghost Benati, which brings me to another tangent because you were on that Mid Max uh, Trivia Tower uh, th- thing, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, there was a Starcraft Ghost question, and it, it was a tough one because it was not clear that canceled games could be allowed. Yep, because it's like a screenshot from a game, and you just think, like, okay, a screenshot someone could have taken from a game, and I just, nope, it was like you know, a screenshot of a never-released game from the studio. Yeah, that was, uh, I, and I knew it really early, and I just didn't believe it. I just didn't believe that StarCraft Ghost would have been the answer. Uh, you did a good job, by the way. You made it to the, fina- the final of that, yeah. and then blew it, but no, you did a good of course, job. I mean, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, it would have taken me several no more idea. clues to get that one. I mean, I knew... In my heart, I knew Fire Emblem Awakening wasn't right because they said he said in the the back so of the box. The, what was, was happening here was the final question was he was reading from the back of a box and people and everyone had to guess what game he, it was from and it was like p- play against thousands, uh, hundreds of battles in this yeah. fantastic and fantastic worlds and be the commander and it was, yeah, fantastic 3D worlds. So it was like, it. oh, they're making a big deal about it being 3D. Um, but I'm like, Fire Emblem Awakening doesn't have hundreds of battles. It has dozens, maybe a hundred, but it doesn't have hundreds. And I'm, as I'm like answering, I'm like, I'm just going to go with it because it's the only thing I can think of. And then, of course, right there, Jared Petty got it. It was, it was a fun one, though. That was good. Jared Petty did really good. Hundreds of battles sounds kind of exhausting, to be yeah. honest. Anyways, his actual question. Do you think companies have da- <clears throat> Do you think companies have data showing the wider audiences care about graphics over frame rate? I have to think this is the only reason a current gen game wouldn't make sacrifices to make a 60 60- FPS mode. Okay, yeah, Jeff. So why yeah. is this happening? Why is okay. Gotham Knights, Plague Tale, why, why are we already getting 30 FPS games? There is definitely data that shows that gamers care more about graphics than frame rate in terms of sales and marketing stuff. But part of that is, you know, um, what, what, it's the chicken and egg. That was kind of all you were giving people with some of the biggest games. They, they, they were only available in 30 frames per second. So... How could we really know? Now that gamers have had two, three solid years of almost every game coming out having at least the option of 60 frames per second, and you've heard this if you've listened to conversations where people said, I never cared about frame rate, and now I do, I couldn't go back to 30 frames per second. I'll be interested to see uh, uh, if, if these games do get punished at all. They probably won't. They will probably sell fine. Um, but I, yeah, I think that they do have the data that shows if the game looks better in screenshots, that's more important than having a 60 frames per second mode. It's just wild because both, you can have both. You can have yeah. the option. Like that's what so many games have done. And I just don't believe that there's any reason that the, the Gotham Knights specifically doesn't have it other than you ran out of time and you couldn't get the, the, like the 60 frames per second locked in for some weird technical reason that would, that's gonna take time to solve. That's the reality of probably what is happening here. Yes, I agree. Uh, uh, also, Matt. real quick, Turbo Sean uh, says second place in Trivia Tower is how we roll around here. Ch- Turbo Sean, our mod, also got second place uh, when we were doing <laughs> right. when we did the Giant Bomb versus a uh, um, Men Mac community, and uh, he showed up on our behalf here and got second place. That's right. That's why I said Min Max. Is that actually Min Max who runs that? Yes, or is it just him? Okay, yeah, yeah, Ben Hansen is Min Max. Yeah. I, yeah, I just didn't know if he did it, like separately. Uh, yeah. Screaming Madden says, hello, Jeff. Come on, let's go cruising. Grub <laughs> and Mike, take me home. Country. Ah, fuck. Minotti. 
With the rave reviews that Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope are getting, it makes me think, do you think Nintendo will allow Microsoft to do other Nintendo Ubisoft collaboration games, or will they just stick to Mario plus Rabbids? Remember that Starlink with Star Fox didn't light the world on fire. It's kind of a shame that it didn't. I, I wonder if that was hurt by the Wii U timing more than anything else and a lot of other things there. I should go back and play uh, Starlink. Yeah, it that had a lot of things going against it. It was a very, it was a late Toys to Life initiative, uh, but people liked it. Yeah, uh, people said I it was fun. Nothing negative to say about it, really. Other, I mean, it didn't blow my socks off or anything, but I definitely enjoyed what I played of it. I just didn't play much of it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's weird to imagine what else they would let Ubisoft to work with, uh, unless it was this Mario plus Rabbits team. Maybe like their their next thing is just going to be something else in that Nintendo universe, because like any other team would have to make an Ubisoft game, right? I'd imagine maybe that's real silly of me. Of course, they could make other games, but I just imagine them making a real Ubisoft ass Ubisoft game. And part of the reason why these Mario plus Rabbids games work is because they don't feel very Ubisoft -y in a yeah. lot of ways. Yeah, there's something about them that feels like, oh, this is like Nintendo didn't make this. There's something weird about this, especially like in Sparks of Hope. I said this before. There's like some characters who don't talk at all, like Mario. There's some characters who only talk with like word bubbles, like Luigi. Uh, and then there's like just some fully voiced characters, like the Roomba that guides you. And it's just weird. I'm like, Nintendo is not, it, I, the Nintendo wouldn't do that. That's weird. I don't know if it's better or worse, but they wouldn't do that. You see that uh, so story, story going around about uh, Retro Studios was going to do a, uh, a Zelda yes. turn based strategy game. And I'm like, oh, that could have been cool. Maybe they could do that something like been that. Pretty cool. Well, so you think Ubisoft would maybe just make. I don't know. A, a Zelda treasure. I mean, why? I mean, at a certain point, I do say, it, why not? Yeah, it, it would actually it'd be an easier transition than somehow finagling Mario into that world and making yeah. it work. But yeah, Zelda would be like a cakewalk compared to that. True. Uh, Lossian, hey, Jeff, can't listen to 90s Disney podcast on the toilet grub. And Mike, Minions lover Minotti, uh, hope you're doing well. What is your go to game when you just can't fall asleep? Yep, before deciding to move, did you or your wife need convincing? As far as the go-to game when I can't fall asleep, there's not one, but I'm usually working on some kind of JRPG that I'm playing on some kind of portable device by my bed, and that's good, because I usually won't get super worked up or tense playing that. Like, if I want to try playing Splatoon in bed, is bad, because those battles can get tense, and it's like, you know, it's really... It's, it's 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 a lot to think about. There's a timer. You're getting worked up. It'll keep you up. If I go grind around and do some side quests in a JRPG, I could probably fall asleep after that. Yeah, if I'm uh, if I want if I want to fall asleep, it's any game with a lot of reading. I think uh, reading in general just makes my eyes mm. sleepy, and I fall asleep pretty quickly. The uh, the Ace Attorney games were actually pretty good for that. Like, Ho like yeah, it, Hotel you... Dusk. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I mean, even has Dusk in the name. Yeah, exactly. It's got black and white, so it's kind of easy on the mm. eyes. Um, so it, the moving was, uh, it was a surprising thing in its, in its own way. Like we were definitely deciding to buy a house. We knew we couldn't afford any house that was going to be big enough for our family in Denver. Uh, so we were looking at a couple of cities. I thought, Hey, Cleveland is someplace I I've generally liked the couple times I've been in that region. I also knew I could be closer to Mike so we could do stuff in person. And, uh, you know, the other thing was like Minneapolis, but I, you know, a lot of it comes down to. I'm easy. <laughs> like, I'll go where we're going to go. Is she going to be okay? But I didn't have to talk her into it. I, she was looking at places in Minneapolis. Then suddenly she found, she started looking at houses in Cleveland after I suggested it. She found one. It didn't work out. She found this one and it just sort of happened. It's weird how like uh, the, such a big life decision. It kind of could just slot into place really fast and you almost can't help, but like just keep pushing it along. And suddenly I'm here. And it was um, so no, no real talking anyone into anything. It just sort of happened. And I'm so glad you did, Jeff. We still have so many more fun adventures to go on. I know. I got a, a, a bunch of busy weekends come up, but very soon, at least by your birthday, I should come over and visit you and hang out. Yeah. Oh, so uh, this, there's like, you, you know, that Van Gogh interactive thing that was going around yes. a bunch of cities. Yeah. So those people are doing a Disney animation one and Cleveland is actually going to be one of its first stops. And that's well, like January, February. Well, come over. By the way, we'll do that. We'll go to that. Yeah. Uh, casual says, dear Jeff, cinnamon bun and grub and Mike Mudcake Minotti, how much hot cocoa or chocolate can you drink in one sitting? Jeff, it's a tragedy. I used to be like a kid, a big chocolate fiend. I love my hot chocolate. 
at some point I really lost my taste for chocolate. I barely ever eat chocolate anymore or drink hot chocolate. It's too sad. I used to really like a nice cup of hot chocolate. And now it is just so it's so rich. It's so yeah. much. I can't do I can't do it anymore. Yeah, I could drink like half a cup. That's how much I could drink these days. I'm right. I'm, I still eat a lot of chocolate, a lot of sweets. Um, I do have a sweet tooth. It's um, it's definitely part of um, getting that dopamine rush of a little bit of sugar. Like, yeah, I, I like that. But the hot chocolate, hot cocoa, way too sweet. And it almost like hurts my throat from how much sugar is in there. I, I brought that up as like drinking um, a, a sugary drink hurting your throat. And everyone, I think it was a bomb cast or maybe voicemail dump truck was like, no, no, that doesn't, it's just, it's, you know, that doesn't do it. It's the carbonation. I'm like, for me, it's also the sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's like that much sugar, just something about it gets at my, my, my esophagus or whatever. So yeah, I'm, I'm done with the hot cocoa for the most part. Usually I end up drinking about half a cup when my kids say they want some and then they stop drinking it. And I'm like, I guess I'll finish this. Maybe that's the other factor. Like I don't have kids. It's like, well, I'm going to, you know, you know, live your best life i'm not about to put on a pot of hot chocolate for like it myself right i i i have the espresso machine i'll go make an espresso uh mm. and you don't have exactly like a, a coffee lifestyle so yeah like, no yeah although like again i had like that one coffee and it was like oh that tasted good it was maybe a little too much for me but i don't know maybe i like want something just to because like when i want coffee now the problem is i have to go out and get it and it's like 4 p.m. and I'm working or it's re it's like the first thing out of bed. So I don't know. Yep. Uh, it's like some another fucking appliance I have to have in my kitchen. Yep. Yeah. Fun stuff. Um, Winnie says, hello, Mike. Optimistic Arby's coupon. <laughs> 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 and Jeff, unoptimistic barber coupon grub. <laughs> What's your favorite forgotten peripheral? Mine is the switch precursor. The super Game Boy. Huh. Ooh. This is good. I mean, there's so many good peripherals. This isn't even Nintendo. That Dreamcast uh, fishing controller sure, Jeff, was yeah. just the best. That thing ruled. Sega Bass Fishing with that bad boy. Those were good times. Yeah. Love that I, thing. Uh, I don't know if it's any of my things are forgotten. I, I mean, I love the DDR pads, uh, playing games that way, or or the uh, international track and field pad, like pad for the NES. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and... I, I don't know. I think I, oh, I like the idea of the power glove. I don't, I never actually enjoyed using it. No one did. But the, uh, the U-Force, I tried that oh. once and it actually was pretty cool. Uh, it didn't, you know, it was uh, exhausting and not a real way to play games, but it was such an early example of motion controls. It was actually pretty impressive that it worked, so. I had one of those like Game Boy accessory kits. I did like the whole thing with like the magnifying glass screen yes. and the light and all that bullshit. I didn't and have like, like the the complete like the kit that was like um in the same style as the Game Boy and had the closing lid over it. Is that the one that you had? Yes. Yeah, I think so, so yeah. I have one now. I never actually used it, but I definitely had a magnifying lens and a light and a worm light and all that stuff. And honestly, mm -hmm. Until the Game Boy Advance SP, the worm light is probably my most used peripheral. Worm light, uh, that's incredible. My answer to this one, though, is the Game Boy camera. The Game Boy camera is oh, by yeah. far the best. Did you know? I don't think it's listed anymore. That was my only Game Facts uh, submission ever. I had oh, a... that's right, a, yes. I had a secrets guide or something for the Game Boy camera. It was not very substantial, yeah. but yes, there was for some time a Mike Minotti Game Facts submission <laughs> <laughs> from like when I was 12 or whatever. Um... All right, good stuff there. Chrono Bound says, "Howdy, B and Chi dogs." The past weekend at the Portland Game Retro Gaming Expo, oh, that sounds fun. I made it to the finals of the Blockbuster Video Game World Championship Three. God, this sounds fun. Excluding fighting in tourneys, this is probably the highest I placed in a tournament. When was the last time you participated in a tournament? And what? Or your best results, uh, Chrono. I would like some more details about this. Is there <laughs> like, video what? of this? Because this sounds like a great. Yeah. A, a lot of people I know, uh, including MVG and uh, Chris Kohler, were at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Should we go to this next year? Uh, we, there, you know, there's one. Portland's in, a bits away. I mean, yeah, there's maybe. One, there's one in um, too many games. I think happens near Philadelphia. I want to say. Uh, maybe that we could swing Somebody that. Somebody said something was happening in Pittsburgh maybe soonish, and that's close. I imagine okay. it's probably smaller, but hey, it would be fun. Uh, we yes, should, me, I want to go to something like this. Yeah, give me more info, please. Um, I've been in some, like, Smash Bros. tournaments. Uh, I think my last one was actually during Smash 4 era, where I went to one uh, around here. And actually, my brother, 
Chris, he won the singles tournament and him and his friend won the, 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 the duos tournament also. So he had a very good showing at that. So good on him. Um, I do remember I felt the one like my first E3. I think it was my first E3 and they were promoting like one that's like Street Fighter four, maybe like Ultra Street Fighter four. It was like one of the new versions of it. And there was going to be a tournament and our, our old boss and Shu wanted me to be at it. I was like, oh, OK, yeah. He's like, now, look, I don't say you have to win, but don't embarrass me. <laughs> so <laughs> I did all this practicing and stuff like I got decent. Then I got there and they gave me a fucking arcade stick. And all I ever practiced on was my controller. And it was just bad. And it was like they even like had like professional like shoutcasters and stuff. And it was like streamed. And it was like so I did not do very well. I did not enjoy that experience. You ever been in any tournaments, Jeff, at all? Uh, I'm trying to. I mean, I was in the Trivia Tower tournament just a little yeah. bit ago. Um, there, there was that one where you had to play Smash Brothers. I forget what that was for. Oh, yeah. I, the kind of funny uh, video gaming world championship thing. Uh I, I did pretty well in that. I got through to, to, to oh, basically what was the final round. Um, but I, then I had Dan on my team and he sunk me. Uh, even though we were, everyone was in it for themselves in that round of Smash Brothers, it was 2v2. And I got paired up with Dan Riker. And uh, really, I lost it for us. But yeah, uh, that was, that was a, a good time. I, I want to do more stuff like that. Um, they had some fun stuff in that, in that tournament. Some people in chat are saying, go to Summer Games Done Quick next year. That is almost certainly happening, right? Where, where's, where's it at? That's the Boston one. It's always in Boston. It's always in Boston. Okay, cool. Yeah, always in. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure it's always. I remember. In I Boston. just remember there was. Um, I don't know. No, because I moved to Denver in the summer, and I remember that one year, Summer Games Done Quick had just ended right before I got there. And is it in Minneapolis? Is that what it makes? Been, okay, it's, so it's been in Denver guess, before. It's in. Oh, okay. It's in Minneapolis. Never mind. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, that everybody. Sounds, that sounds right. Actually, I, well, I, I never uh, remember Boston. Actually, uh, Probably about as far away anyway, so that's fine. Just yeah. a different side. Uh, all right, next one here is from Octo. Yo, Jeff and Mike, what podcast are we on right now anyway? Uh, are there any portable game soundtracks that stick out in your mind? Ace Attorney deserves special props for its all-time great soundtrack, originally on Game Boy Advance, a system somewhat notorious for its lacking sound capabilities. Golden Sun was also great on Game Boy Advance, as were the Castlevania games. Well, a lot of the music was reused from previous games. Yeah, the, the Castlevania ones were good, except for Harmony of Dissidents. For some reason, that soundtrack was weird and not very good. But uh, Ace Attorney is definitely probably the best answer here. That is an incredible soundtrack, especially for what that game is. Uh, that's nuts. Uh, Mario Land 1. Like, Mario Land 2 is better than Mario Land 1 in almost every way, except the soundtrack. Mario Land 1's soundtrack is very good. Yes, that is a banger of a soundtrack. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, the answer to this question is the CD that I have in my car, Mike. Uh, Link's Awakening. Link's nah. Awakening has a great soundtrack. I mean, it's a it song. Does. It's a it's, or it's a, a game about playing instruments, and uh, whenever you collect one of those instruments, it'll play a little tune played on that instrument, and all those little uh, uh, those stingers are really good. And then you put all the instruments together, and that song is amazing. And then uh, playing your ocarina with Marin, uh, I think that's her name. Uh, Marin, yeah, in, in, yeah, in the meadow, uh, is fantastic. And then taking her to sing to the uh, the the uh, big walrus is a great musical moment. And you can always find her in the animal village singing to all the animals. It's just a really musical game, and all the music is really well done. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's very very good. This is a, maybe quite a spirit of the question. Elite beat agents. That soundtrack is so good. There, I like a lot of those covers more than the original, especially yep. Jumping Jack Flash. Yep. Especially Jumping Jack Flash. Uh, one up versus CPU says hello, Jeff, NWO, Wolfpack, Grub, and Mike Bischoff Minotti. It's funny. <laughs> uh, going head to head with AEW NXT like 2010 TNA going head to head with Raw. That was just wild when they did that. You we, at some point, Jeff? Actually, I want to do a watch along with you. I want to make you watch that first. TNA Impact when they went randomly went head to head with Raw because Bischoff and Hogan came in and they had just this weird episode. It was like somebody got stuck on top of this weird dome still cage thing they had. I would and then like that. Jeff that Hardy would just good time. show up. The nasty boys who were very old and very fat were causing a lot of havoc backstage. Uh, I think at one point, Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan got into like a back and forth argument about how things are going to change. Then everyone said, no, things are going to be different. No, they're going to change. No, they're going to be different. Oh, this rules. And it's incredible. 
it's incredible. So yeah, that's gonna that'll be a fun watch along. Maybe we can rope Dan in on that or something. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on the new Pokemon uh, Bella Bolt? P.S. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, I can't. I I barely even looked at this Pokemon Jeff because they introduced him the same time as Iono, this new trainer. And there's this thing I've noticed with with a lot of anime characters, even cartoon characters in general, where they have you spike have them. teeth. Oh, no, sorry, yeah, okay. no, definitely not. They have spike teeth, and I don't like the spike teeth. And people, I, people have explained it to me, and I believe your explanation. Explanation. But what is there to explain about you not liking it? I don't understand. Let me explain I, why you like it, Mike. No, no that's not how it <laughs> well, works. Let me explain why they have the spike. It's like it's supposed to sure. represent like mischievousness. I kind of get that. I uh, I don't I don't think teeth are emotive the same way that like mouths and eyes are. I don't appreciate people trying to make teeth emotive. Yeah. Um. But this uh this uh, Bella Bolt guy. I'm a big fan of this this round just, motherfucker. It just, it just looks like an egg. He's fine. He looks like a he looks like a frog that's been inflated. I like how simple he looks. Yeah. Too many Pokemon are over designed now. This guy's a relatively simple little dude. So that's nice. Jedi Moss Force says, uh, good evening, Jeff and Mike. The reports today from Bloomberg about the voice uh, acting issues are accurate. I can't help but feel a little bit of resentment toward against Taylor for calling for a boycott and throwing the dev team and hail under the bus over what appears to be a fairly standard back and forth over pay. It doesn't appear to be malicious against her. I agree VAs deserve better pay, but it was in poor taste to drive people who had no involvement in any of this into this mess and put a cloud over what appears to be a high quality game. Should we be concerned that the current story about uh, the v the Bayonetta VA situation will set back efforts to boost pay for VAs? I mean, look, I, I still would caution against taking a side here. Uh, like we've heard, like, you know, sometimes it's the thing where you hear the one side of the story, then we hear the second side and because it's the newest side. We like take that as canon. Again, we still don't really know what happened. We may never know what happened, and we don't have to take a side. I wouldn't be worried about this being bad for voice actors. If yeah, anything, I bet people would be more cautious about uh, not pissing off the voice actors because, again, like the boycott, whatever, that's probably not going to happen. But that was a lot of negative attention. That tweet of her in the video and the tweet got a ton of views. So, uh, and it, honestly, a lot more people saw that than are going to see these kind of follow up reports. So. Yep, I agree. Pablo Ka says, what's up, Beef and Cheddar Hermanos? Jeff, if you had a beard to Bella Bolt, then you have the Pokemon equivalent of Mike. Do you agree? <laughs> uh, Mike, what Pokemon resembles Jeff the most, and why is it slocking? Enjoy your gaming. <laughs> yeah, that's about right, actually. You've nailed it on the head there, Pablo. Thank you. Take a look here. Uh, I got, I'm devastated. I think that the, uh, the cardboard cutout thing display of the rock with his Zoa energy drink that was at my grocery store is gone now. Oh, what uh, the hell? Yeah, I was taking selfies every single time I went in there, and it was actually it was a fun little gimmick. Sean, but, uh, I knew it was pronounced slacking. Don't worry. I mean, it is. Give uh, me a break. I mean, I don't think they put two Ks in there, so it's not like slack king. It's just slack king. Slack king. Yeah, I'm being, yeah, look, I'm just I'm just saying what they wrote. All right, it's not my bad that not my bad that they are bad with words. Uh, Superhuman says, Mike, I forgot if you talked about this, but would you consider doing a spoiler chat on Return to Monkey Island, similar to the Game Club chats? Um, I could maybe find a way to share some opinions. I don't want to make too much of a deal of it because it sounds like work and there's a lot of work already. I would like to maybe at some point do a spoiler chat on Return of Monkey Island, though. Sure. If you have a specific question, I assume you want me to talk about the ending. So uh, I could I could do that at some point. I, I talked about it a little bit when I beat it on the stream. Maybe it wasn't probably super substantial, though, and a lot of people probably didn't see that. So, oh, no, Jeff, you're leaning. Yep. Initiating uh, lean mode. I'm now going to be yeah. slacking. No, oh, so you're slacking. Great. Yep. Uncharted Wolf says, hey, Jeff, forced, forcing me to record the Metacritic predictions because my monthly Patreon payment isn't enough for you. <laughs> Do work yeah. for me. I don't know if that's come in yet, by the way. Yeah. And Mike, comply it to Jeff's hey, tyranny, Minotti. You get paid in like three days. You shut the hell up. Ooh, baby. Have you ever had a piece of media that you loved and wanted everyone you know someone specifically to experience it but because of the medium it's in that's not possible for example i would love everyone to watch chainsaw man or at least watch its masterpiece of an opening but understandably not everyone is in to watching an anime i mean this isn't quite the same thing but like sometimes when i'm reviewing game and i want to just talk about it with a lot of people i can't i definitely had that with uncharted 4 especially because it had all these fucking monkey island easter eggs and i just wanted to talk to my brothers about that 
so badly, but I couldn't spoil it for them because like that's half the fun is you're not expecting it. So that's kind of like that. Anything with you, Jeff? Uh, I remember uh, really wanting you to play Hitman and yeah. just being like, man, I think once you play it, you'll get it. Um, it's like, even if you just play through it once, you're going to get it. But replaying stuff, you're really going to get it. And finally, when you played it, it's like, oh, that worked. This, I, I feel the opposite with uh, of this m- with most other things. I um, I, I don't care if people watch Andor uh, uh, only as far as it, like as far as like my, uh, what I need out of it. I just need you to watch it so it, we get more of it. Uh, that's all I care about on that side of things. If you actually aren't enjoying yourself, I, I'd rather watch it by myself in a vacuum and not have to hear what anyone else actually thinks about the show. Uh, to a certain there, yeah, there's some exceptions there, but for the most part, and it's kind of how I'm with sports too. I don't necessarily like watching sports with other people. I know a lot, a lot of people like going mm-hmm. to cheer with their friends. I'm like, ah, I need to just be into it. I don't need to hear your, uh, you know, backseat comments about what the players should be doing. I, <laughs> I, I think that's, I don't want to hear that stuff. Let me just watch and focus on it. And so, uh, yeah, I don't get a lot of enjoyment from that, that stuff in most other things, but in games a little bit here and there. Kara Bear says, after seeing what Bluebrain and Konami have done to Silent Hill, the tall lady from Giant Bomb has become enraged, locked you in a small <laughs> dingy room, and won't let you out until you finish the task. Craft a safer work, sorry Mike, mod for a Nintendo game that'll leave the player feeling miserable inside like Silent Hill did in the good old days. My suggestion, add a stamina meter to Mario uh, Odyssey. Uh, maybe how about a, a game where Luigi just tries to get inside of Smash Brothers and it never succeeds? <laughs> that's pretty good. A stamina meter in Mario Odyssey does sound like hell. That's pretty funny. Uh, what, what, what's the specific question here? I was like, I got an email that I was looking at for a second. I got distracted. Uh, so we had to craft a safer work mod for a Nintendo game that'll leave players feeling miserable inside, just like Silent Hill. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a safer work mod, so uh, none of the like the crushing stuff. I was gonna do the Pikmin just, that just appeared in my How brain. About Jeff just has to play Mario Party against Dan, like an AI Dan Riker, and he gets a ten star like handicap every time for some reason. Yeah, a, a single player mod for all Mario Party games actually. So that's a miserable one right there. Vision forty nine says on a scale of one to the discovery of Jimmy Hoffa's remains, how likely is it that Nintendo actually weighs in on the Bayonetta issue in any? meaningful capacity i don't think so i mean even to my surprise it apparently seems like platinum had more to do with paying uh paying the voice actors than nintendo did right yeah i mean so, i think i think that's how it works on a lot of these cases where uh yeah nintendo has hired this company to do this job um and it is a first party nintendo game but the day-to-day decisions and getting that stuff done and uh, deciding how the budget gets spent is up to the people at Platinum. That is how the, these deals typically work. Yeah, I think... I think also, the, the deal's never going to talk about this. No, now now, now that we're at this point, fuck no. No, they aren't getting into that mire. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. Uh, Lenny, Cool Dick Denver, says, Hey, Mike, Chris Minotti will never be a Nintendo. Only AJ Minotti. Minotti. And Jeff, <laughs> jury duty is for losers, grub. Uh, I've never done it. Fan- I, so you were talking about maybe you just got and didn't realize. There was some point where, like, I just didn't check my mail for too long. Like, I, I like, will take it out. I put it on a pile and I went through it. And one of them was, like, a jury duty summons. I was like, oh, shit. When was I supposed to report by? And it already happened. And I was just like, well, let's hope nobody says anything <laughs> about that. And so far, so good. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh. Is Advance Wars reboot camp as dead as Batman now? Actually, I, I bet it is about as dead yeah, as Batman. Too, in other right? words, not, not dead, dead at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought they would just shadow drop it before the end of the year. But sat, that seems to be as likely as Mike letting Chris Minotti be a guest host on a group cast. Hey, if Chris, I don't know if Chris wants to be. If he wants to be, he's a, he's more than welcome to. Nah, me and Chris butt heads. We can't be in the same room yeah, together. That's right. so yeah, that's right. Yeah, thing, a lot of everybody. egos. Yeah, yeah, a lot of egos. egos. I am going to be I'm going to be missing some time in November because I've got couple trips i got a colonoscopy and AJ's going with you there. right well he's going to the one no he's going to the uh, colonoscopy later. right yeah he's going to colonoscopy he's holding my hand <laughs> the whole time uh so yeah i i look i don't think this game is coming out this year absolutely not i still i still think we will probably get it it's not it's not our own possibility it never happens but it would still be surprising yeah i i think i i hope it comes out next year i honestly have no idea G-Man Sir says, hey, Jeff, I like shows where nothing happens, Grub. And Mike, 
I poke holes in my condoms, Miss, Miss Naughty. Wow. Uh, Cranky Kong was the original DK from the arcade games. In no games, he has a son named Donkey Kong Jr. In the modern games, Cranky is stated to be modern Donkey Kong's grandfather. So what happened with modern DK's father, a.k.a. Donkey Kong Jr.? Is he a deadbeat father? Was he murdered? They used to go back and forth on this, whether Donkey Kong in country was the son or grandson of Cranky Kong. You know, Jeff, I think they haven't actually given it all that much thought. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't and think they care. I bet it's a different answer depending on who you ask. Yes, I think that's exactly right. Uh, so I like the idea that it's his grandfather and they're like Donkey Kong Jr. is out there doing something. Hmm. So remember right before uh, Donkey Kong Country, it was Donkey Kong Jr. was like the representation for Donkey Kong and shit. It was Donkey Kong Jr. that you played in in the original Super Mario Kart. Right. Yes. It's kind of wild. Uh, Turbo Sean says, happy Tuesday, Mike. Furry stuff is gross. Also, Mike, oh, there's a picture of me in my Sonic the Hedgehog costume. That's a onesie. <laughs> That's fine. My face is still visible. Uh, Minotti and Jeff buried the Atari hat in the backyard after selling out grub. Uh, did you know that the Game Boy uses a sharp LR3? Oh, this is going to be more Game Boy color shit. A sharp LR35902 processor. The Game Boy Color, incidentally, also uses a sharp LR35902 processor, just clock tire. So it is different. It's clock tire. Yeah, just the like 3DS the new 3DS. The 3DS, oh my god. This is an ARMIIMP core processor. And once you know it, the new 3DS also uses an uh, uh, just clock. Interesting oh, wow. pattern. Hey, this is a bunch of nerd shit. I, can, I got bored reading this. I'm about wow. to slouch like oh, Jeff. Sh Sean, let me know if you want your money back for this month. No. Uh, wow, that's pretty offensive. No, absolutely, what he just did absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, well, that's it for interesting uh, for, for, pattern. A Michael Samuel Minotti. He finishes. I think that is a very interesting. Over, pattern. There's colors and there's not colors. That's a pretty big <laughs> difference. I don't care about your nerd shit with with processors and GPUs. Also, <laughs> there's more to internals than just the GPU and all that. There's a lot of different shit in there. You shut the hell up. I'll fight you. I'm mad. Uh, <laughs> Get his ass. Jeff, I need to take a short break before I say something I'm going to regret. Let's do it. I'll be right back. I'm going to. All right. I hit the uh, ad button here on YouTube, which I don't know. I guess play some ads, but uh, yeah, if you're not we'll watching ads, have... hello. So things. No super chats yet, so we don't have to read any of those ads. unless people change their mind. But uh, we do have. Oh, Jeff, think about what RPG you want to be on Switch. It's not on the ad. JRPG. Japanese shit. Yeah. On your I mean, I have my answer. Well, I mean, it's been my answer every, for years. Every JRPG yeah. is on the Switch. What are you yeah. talking about? Like, that's yeah. impossible. Not everyone. <sighs> Let me add him. I'm gonna take his ass out. Yeah, get his ass. That was really well done, Sean. <laughs> really well done. Thank you. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I uh, I've been saving that one for months. Yeah, Don't I appreciate it. Nice. <laughs> also, this picture of him. He is a furry in this picture, and I think that is just fine. I don't. He's I don't think furry stuff is He's disgusting at all. His true feeling. Yeah, exactly. True. Just needs coming. It's true. That was it. Uh, what are, what are get, my thoughts get out on the that, Amico that so far? Closet, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think about the Amico at all. That's my thought about it. Um, and I don't think you should either. Don't don't think about the Amico because it's not going to ever amount to anything. So it's like some Voldemort shit. The more you think about it, the stronger it gets. Yeah, that's right. Man, I got a code for uh, Sparks of Hope. I'm gonna download that shit tonight and start playing it. it looks so much fun. Um, don't load Phasmophobia, dog. I, I'll yeah, I told, sure. I told Mike to do it. Yeah, Dude. sure. We maybe we do a stream soon. Uh, I think the game is great. Yeah, I'll, I'll play some of that. That'd be good. I saw it at um, SGDQ. It actually does. Look yeah, people more people will speedrun the shit out of the game. It's really yeah. fun to see. Oh man, the Pikmin and Pikmin Bloom have like skulls and pumpkins they can wear. Ah, that's fun. I should play some more Pikmin Bloom. Um. All right. Grub's heart is with the Ouya. That's right. That's true. Uh, the Miko can never pull me away from the Ouya. I I. Back the Ouya. I bought the Ouya. The Ouya is a, it's a noble little body. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I, I, ha I could honestly go in that room right there, right here, and get an Ouya if you really wanted me to. I'm not going to. That's your, uh, that's your amazing frog machine right there. Wait, what's 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 an amazing frog? Oh, amazing, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, like yeah. the one Ouya exclusive. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I actually ended up getting that on... I think it's on Steam now. So let me see. It's on Steam yeah, now, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's on Steam. Because what, that and Towerfall were the two big yes. ones. Yeah, Towerfall. Towerfall. And, and um, actually really also, good. there was a duck game, isn't it? There was... Um, where in the amazing, duck game? I have was... Amazing Frog and Amazing Frog question mark V3. 
Oh yeah. shit! You got the V three? God that damn! V3? That for a V two? Uh, they might have done a V two. I don't have it though. Uh, I, like it's amazing frog question mark, and then the um the logo is like a Grand Theft Auto five as the V, and then it just says three over it. Uh... <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome back. We talked about Ouya, and we talked about how we got your ass with that Game Boy shit. You uh you, you went Get down. Fucked. Get fucked. Get fucked, Naughty. <laughs> and also that you're a furry. A Get back to your mod holes. We got a wow. show to do. Wow, I, I would never wow. talk to you guys that way. I would never talk to you that way. It's problematic. I got the hiccups. I got the hiccups. Oh, that's fine. Oh my god. All right. Hang Probably on. from slouching, you asshole. Yes, I know. I didn't. You didn't have to point it out. <laughs> god damn it! Now I hiccup trying to yell at you. It's a, this is hell. All right, give me a second. You try to get the simpy of the people, but you don't get my simpy at all. Scott Steiner thing, everybody. All right. I definitely didn't fix it, but we're on our way. Mm -hmm. God damn it. Okay. All right. Let's. Um... Oh, shit. It's Silent Hill 5 leaked on, on Twitter. Did you see that? No. Let's take that a look. Carry hiccups. It didn't. I don't know. I thought that'd be a good surprise. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, let me, give me one more second. Something. You know what? I'm going to drink some water. I'll be right back. All right, it didn't leak shit. I should have done something weirder. I panicked, though, in the moment. I'm not watching Dynamite. I don't know if anybody is. I, uh, I saw something concerning on my Twitter as I was peeing. I hope it, I hope it was a storyline thing, but it looked like somebody got very hurt. Hoping the best there. Now it's finally just me. Now, if I start saying that Game Boy Color is a separate platform, the mods will just come back in and bother me. So now I'll leave it alone. Play Terracing. I always have to look up the tabs for Terracing. I always forget how that one goes. It's a revision, goddammit. Quiet, you. Oh, shit, you guys can't even hear it. I was playing it perfectly, and I'm not going to change my Discord settings in the middle of a podcast. It was beautiful. You have to just trust me. Uh, Overwatch is going well. I kind of want to play some more sounds. Yeah, thanks, everybody. <laughs> hey, uh, well, I don't think enough of you had told me that you can't hear it. If only somebody would help me. I appreciate it, everyone. Uh, I did figure it out. It was very impressive. Hey, Jeff, how you feeling? I still have the hiccups, but we, we, the show must go on. So it will. Don't worry, we'll, we'll be fine. All right, all right. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. And we are back, Jeff. There's been a lot of JRPGs on the Switch lately. A lot of JRPG ports over the course of the lifetime of this system. Now you're not the biggest JRPG guy, but if there is there a specific JRPG <laughs> that has a JRPG <laughs> needs to be on the Switch, what is happening here? I'm going to try yelling. I have the hiccups, so if I start hiccuping, everyone. That'll something. help you. Yeah, that'll Has, help. Yeah. What's the last time we had SNES uh, games on NSO? Oh, I don't know. Has it been a little bit? They dropped like, like one a little one. while. Have they run out of caveman games to put on there yeah. now? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I mean, it, they're just obviously not going to put it on there. Um, uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, why would that possibly be? I mean, they could clearly make a deal with Square Enix. Do you think? But, like, there aren't too many jrpgs on there there's some breath of fire games they did put earthbound on there right yeah so, i mean chrono trigger's not oh man hiccups chrono trigger's not on there right no chrono trigger's not in no way square enix would allow that because that's a game that right they would just sell it, it feels like that again. that game is just somehow in that realm where it's just a little bit too expensive I, but then just sell it to me i mean i would pay <laughs> i'll pay 20 dollars for it i mean i don't i know that's a lot but i would i would do that so just sell it to me then uh, I don't get why they have to put it in this weird purgatory where it's like, oh, we're not going to get enough money if we put it on Nintendo Switch Online, but we also won't sell it to you, so we'll just do nothing with it. That's that's silly. The uh, last uh, SNES games we got was, was in July when we got Fighter's History and Kirby's Avalanche. Uh, they were actually like doing like almost monthly drops, or at least every other month, uh, month drops for SNES in 2022, but nothing since July, so... That's right. I, I, I do need Boshi, Pablo Cost says. I, I need Boshi. 
I bet we will still get it at some point. I'm holding out hope. They got to look around and see. Like, there's got to be something we can put on here still. Uh, but there's still some shit, not shit, but some very unexciting stuff that they haven't thrown on there yet. Like we haven't gotten. Oh, we have gotten Wario's Woods. Never mind. I have <laughs> no idea. Yep. Or is that just the NES version of Wario's Woods? Actually, we didn't get the the SNES version of Wario's Woods was like a Satellaview thing, wasn't it? Or yeah, I don't, I don't I get. I don't. I, Wario Woods I associate with NES, but I don't remember all the Wario Woods versions. Yeah, there was something like that. Um, I think I said this before. I really liked playing Tales of uh. Vesperia uh, Definitive Edition on the Switch and the other kind of game Tales game from around that era that people really like is Tales uh, from the Abyss and that hasn't uh, been ported. That got a 3DS port actually that people like enough but I'm like ah, this was a PlayStation 2 game originally I'd rather maybe play on something a little bit more powerful than a 3DS so I'm holding out that Tales, uh, Tales from the Abyss will come to Switch at some point. We're getting the Tales of Symphonia Although that's like based on the PlayStation 2 version of that, which only ran at 30 frames per second. So that's a bit of a bummer. Plus, I've beaten that game before and I have it on my GameCube. But uh, I'd like to get some more Tales games on the GameCube. Are, uh, are you ready, Jeff, to see what our lovely community has said about this topic? Yeah, let me see those answers. Benji Glaskey just says Terra Nigma. He really emphasized the M for me. You got to appreciate you. that. That's a friend. Yeah. That would actually just really be a very big win for NSO. Actually, people would get very excited about that because it never released in in the US, but it did in Europe. So it's already translated and everything. It's just a matter of putting it on there. Uh, mm-hmm. That would actually be pretty exciting. I don't think any of the other um, games from uh, the Quinjet, the, the Quinjet trilogy of action RPGs are on there either. So they should get Illusion of Gaia and the other Soul Blazer, Soul Blazer. I remember this time uh, on there as well. Dr. Suss says, as a person who doesn't usually play JRPGs, I just want something that has its greatness universally agreed upon. The obvious choice is Final Fantasy, all the bravest. You remember that one, Jeff? That was like one of the early, uh, like modern day mobile games for Final Fantasy. Uh, Everybody hated it. That's why. Yes. No, I I remember there. I remember the announcement. Final Fantasy game coming to mobile. This is a feature phone game, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, it was like a bunch of I just remember it was like you had a zillion characters and they would just have their little it was called all oh, the bravest because that's ATB, yeah, ATB. Which is the battle what, system. What, was like, it on like iPhone or was it uh, it was iPhone it was, oh, it was iPhone. iPhone okay all right so now so that's not, what, that's, I didn't know what those words meant when you said feature phone I, yeah that, 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 that was the, the phones, phones before uh, before smartphones uh, yes okay like like blackberries is that a yeah, feature no, phone uh, no that's a smartphone a Nokia like a Nokia okay okay who even knows anymore says I'm going to go with one that's never been on a Nintendo console, but would be a great fit. Blue Dragon. I'm not that interested in Blue Dragon, Jeff, but I would be pretty excited if Lost Odyssey was put over to Switch. Uh, that's the same studio. It's it's, it's a, a Final Fantasy guys thing after he left Square Enix. Yep. He did two RPGs that were exclusive to Xbox. Blue Dragon is like very more. It's much more mechanic based and it has uh, that the, the Dragon Ball guy doing the art. It kind of looks like really more of a Dragon Quest joint than Lost Odyssey is much more like what found, like modern Final Fantasies were like at the time. Yes. Uh, and, and everybody likes it a lot. So I'd like to try that one sometime. It is. I think you can play it on Xbox. So I think it actually has backward compatibility support. So that's yeah, something I, I'm, I would imagine that one would have it because it's yeah, like you said, a lot of people like it. And it, it's one that always comes up when we talk about RPGs. One up versus CPU says, I'd love to see Final Fantasy seven remake cloud version on there. Just kidding. The 3DS versions of Dragon Quest 7 and 8 would be great. Uh, I've been I played both of those. I have, I have them over. Here we go. One second. There we go. So I got my big Dragon Quest kick. I got both of these. In fact, I modded my 3DS originally so that I can reinsert the orchestrated music back into Dragon Quest 8. Especially Dragon Quest 8. There's no reason why that shouldn't be on Switch. It's the problem it's with, with the f- uh, physical perverts, even though I know you digital on a lot of modern stuff uh for some reason you guys always have it within arm's reach at all times <laughs> <laughs> it's just right over there yeah it's true uh that's a good uh, most of the other dragon quest games are on there in some shape or form i know one two and three have like the basically the mobile ports on there and that's how i played dragon quest three and it was still very good and obviously that's also getting the uh the uh hd 3d uh version coming up here so that's nice but there's plenty of other dragon quest games that should be on there kind of wish nine could get reworked for the uh switch actually that'd be pretty cool 
Um, and then, oh, Winnie says, this is what I bet is going to come up a lot. Xeno Gears, when? Yeah, Jeff, people, if for a game that has this horrible flaw of basically the last third of the game being like rushed through with just like text slideshows and random battles, people still just love Xeno Gears a ton. Yeah, I, I mean, it was the RPG. It was the big RPG that hit after Final Fantasy VII really got everyone into uh, RPGs. So it, it did a lot to. Uh, this is it. Was that Xeno Saga? Which one is that? This uh, is Gears. No, Gears. Saga yeah, yeah. is like the weird one on PlayStation Two that a lot of people found very uh, overwrought. Right. Yes. I think is the word. And uh, it had cool. Xeno Gears has cool design and uh, a style to it. So I, I get it. I never played it, but I get it. In fact, Jeff, I think if I had to pick a hell game for you, if you did something that really made me mad and I had the ability to make you play a game, I might actually pick Xeno Gears. I think you would absolutely hate it. Yeah, and, I, and I you'd would. be right too. I would. I would. Yes, absolutely. I think you'd Wait, be you right. You mean Xeno Gears or Xeno Saga this time? Saga. Did I say oh, Gears? I meant gears. Saga. saga. Sorry, right. Saga, 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 Saga. Not Gears. You would like Gears. But, I mean, I don't know if you would. You would hate <laughs> Saga. Like it's confusing. All this Xeno shit. What is a Xeno? Uh, it's, it's something that's different. Is it like robotic? The Xeno? Is that? Oh, Xeno. No, something I get that's it. different. So, yeah, you're so is, smart. So, I mean, it's just what the word means. Well, he'll <laughs> just take the compliment. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course I am. Ramham says, obviously, I had to say Golden Sun. Also, your speculation last week was incorrect. I'm not a big Xenoblade fan and don't have three. <laughs> I forget why I said that. No, I have to go back and look. But I can't believe I was wrong about something. That never happens. Xenomorph. That's right, people. That's right. OK, that's where. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, go, I imagine a lot of people. We, we get Golden Sun fans saying stuff on here a lot of time. Jeff and me and you have don't really have any great affinity for that franchise. I have really appreciate it if i could just easily play it on my switch though and see what all the fuss is about sure It'd be fun uh mr boar says oh no nick turbo says xenoblade chronicles x this i feel like is almost certainly going to happen in between like after they do the dlc for xenoblade chronicles 3 and then before they do xenoblade chronicles 4 i imagine a remaster of this will be like their next project this is the wii u one by the way that we then has one of the few Big Wii U games that never got a Switch port. Uh, Xenoblade does very well on the Switch. All the other Xenoblade games are on the Switch. Why wouldn't they do this? There you go. Uh, lots of reactions to this. There's people putting pukey faces. Yeah, I'm, for I'm some responsible reason. for a couple of those, but yeah, I didn't. I joined <laughs> in on the pukey face, but I did not start the pukey face. Yeah. And you do hear some mixed things. Mostly, I hear people say that they really like this one. Some people don't. I guess it's not nearly as story driven as some of the other ones, which sounds kind of nice. Uh, Mr. Boar says, I want the team that brought uh, Live Alive to Switch to give Chrono Trigger the same treatment. I would like that. I would also be pretty much fine with Chrono Trigger looking the way it did. I think Chrono yeah. Trigger actually already looks very good. Um, uh, I don't know if it it doesn't need too much for me, except for like the slightly better translation that they gave it starting with the DS era and maybe like a speed up and rewind mode just for people. Right. Like, like, a, like something a that's something they screen always hack do. Or something like beyond, yeah. not much more than any of that. Uh, Jimmy Nintendo says Dragon Quest nine. So there you go. I brought that one up. There it is. Oh, and then Razzle Jazzle says I was going to say Dragon Quest 10 offline that technically already has a switch port. It just needs English localization. I do hope we get that. Uh, instead, I'll go with the low hanging fruit and say Super Mario RPG. There you go. You have an ally, Jeff. There you go. All right. Jayton says I do not play many JRPGs, but I'm going to say Mother three because I think that counts. That absolutely counts. And that still has just seemed like such an easy victory for Nintendo for so long. Um, you know, I say this all the time, Jeff, where it, it feels like things don't happen and that they're never going to happen. Uh, like it happened with Elder Ring. It happened with Silent Hill. Right. I think a lot of people are like this is never going to happen. It's going to happen someday and it's going to be wild when it does. But it yeah. still feels like it could be very it's far. Just, it's away. hard to believe at a certain point. But yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Haas says those cowards at Game Freak just need to throw on all the old Pokemon games not hard to make it compatible with Pokemon Home. They will never do this because they know that they can remake those uh, mm -hmm. as many times as they want. It makes I mean, again, people complained about the Diamond and Pearl remakes, like not being very ambitious, blah, 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 blah. They, they sold very well. <laughs> they sold incredibly well. Velocity Prime says my RPG knowledge isn't as deep as others, but a game I would be interested in trying and having available on current consoles is Vagrant yeah, Story. Good, good one. 
People really talked this one up and it got a bit lost coming out so close to the PlayStation 2 launch. Yes, this is a game people do like. If you are if you like that PlayStation 1 aesthetic, you can kind of see its final form, like how good games could kind of look at that aesthetic. A Vagrant Story is very good for that. It's very attractive for a PlayStation yes, 1 game. It's cinematic. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of style to yep. it. Uh so that's a that's a pretty interesting one. Although again, that, the PlayStation oneness of that game is a big part of the appeal for me. So I'm not sure what I would want from like a remake slash remaster of it. Uh, Screaming Man, it says, even though it's a tactical RPG and a game that could be on PlayStation Premium, if Sony negotiated for it, it's Final Fantasy Tactics for me. I've heard nothing but great things about the original. And dang it, I want to play this game on Switch. That is almost certainly happening at some point, Jeff, right? Uh, yeah, it really should have happened by now. It's another one of those weird ones where I, I it just... At a certain point, why aren't you doing it? Why won't you just let us buy this? But uh, I still think, it. yes, it will happen. Uh, ben JC says, by Dreamport, was, were the Persona games to set out with the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters? <laughs> why aren't they already on Switch? It makes no sense. <sighs> it makes no sense. Man, I, I agree. Most of this, this question is, why is Square Enix just such a fucking clown show? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, well, hey, we used to complain it took forever for the Persona games to finally come to Switch. That is happening. And by yeah. the way, uh, we didn't talk about this. The that Persona Five port for Switch apparently very good. Now you could say it better be it was like a PS3 that. game. It's a PS3 game. Well, according well, if, if those Turbo Sean, he'd say no because it's Persona Five Royale, which never came out on PlayStation Three because he'd get real pedantic about it. But uh. You look, yeah, and it's at its core, it's a PlayStation 3. But still, you know, Tales of Symphonia is, is, a, is a PlayStation 2 game, and that's not going to be running too great, maybe. I don't so. think I don't think Turbo Sean would say that because it's actually pronounced Royal, not Royale. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's a, with an E. Is it, I thought I wanted to Is it not with an E? It's not with right, an E. Actually. That would actually make more sense for it to be Royal. Fair because it is. Uh, Wildfire Alex says Mother Three because you already know why. Damn it. Uh, oh, like Sean says all the time in the Discord, it's a PlayStation 3 game. Actually, I noticed you said that, Sean, and that's why I'm calling you out because it's not a PlayStation 3 game. Persona 5 Royale never came out on PlayStation 3. Royal. If that was an answer in Jeopardy, you would get no points, sir. Wow. <laughs> Casual. He's real says, mad that Emron won last month. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Tomato Adventure. Alpha Dreams Game Boy Advance gem predates the Mario Luigi series and should be a nice fit on Switch. Yeah, have you ever put, seen this? This is kind of like, uh, oh. yeah, this is sort of before Mario and Luigi, but by that team on Game of Thrones. I don't think, I don't know if it's ever been translated. Ah, uh, but there's a fan translation out there. Uh, we should do a whole is. series of fan translated games. That'd be fun. Kami as block button says, it's just the Patrick uh, uh, meme with him holding up his hand. It's Devil May Cry 5, a JRPG. And uh, the, our, our Discord friends have reacted with the emoji to spell no Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> uh Lossian with a uh raptor man i haven't seen the raptor thinking meme back when memes actually like had a uniform template mm -hmm. with like the God, picture that's right. the background man, i didn't even realize that went away but you're right yeah, it, it went, went away. away oh it went away the wow. only thing that maybe survived and not necessarily is that kind of font for the text yeah the not impact always. font yeah yeah uh does mario rpg count as a jrpg absolutely it does absolutely Bopping candy from a baby says Wind Waker, and that is not a JRPG. And also, don't sass me. Uh, <laughs> Octo says Say Ga 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 is, uh, is a game that gets spoken about in hushed terms, and it doesn't even have a fan translation. It sounds insane. God, this sounds vaguely familiar. What the hell was this? I got to look this up real quick. I think this is some weird offbeat Sega thing. I mean, I would assume so with a name like so that. Say Ga Ga Ga. Ga. Say Ga Ga Ga. Yeah. It's a 2001 role playing oh this is the one where you can like yeah it, so you can like play as like uh different uh sega characters i do remember it came up for the dreamcast it almost reminds me of that weird namco capcom crossover thing that they had remember that where he's like hey you can play as this tech person and as a mega man in turn-based right. battles something yeah okay huh. uh this man this doesn't even have a fan translation that's nuts uh very late uh dreamcast game or relatively late dreamcast day so I would like to see that. That's a good answer. Thank you very much, Octo. And then Pablo Costa says, I speak for myself and the one true Minotti brother, Chris. A lot of Chris love tonight. Yeah. Uh, when I say we need Eternal Sonata on the Switch, the game has to get out of Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 Purgatory. Damn it. Yes, I said this before. My, Chris, 
not a JRPG fan gets visibly like not like really like off put by any of that kind of weeby stuff. For some reason, loved Eternal Sonata. What a weird thing. It's I think he just really liked the hook of I mean, it was a JRPG, super Japanese JRPG in every way, except with this one weird hook that the musician Chopin was like one of the main characters, like the, the composer. Cool hook. And it's a neat hook. It's you know, I think it's a little bit like um that whole the president of the United States and Nino Kune 2 thing where maybe they don't quite do enough right. with that. But still. Oh, thank you, Inuf In In Inufe. Uh, Project X Zone was that Capcom Namco thing I was talking about. Uh, man, I do wonder if people are going to remember about Eternal Sonata or if that's going to be like the one in 10 years that people talk about a lot in hushed tones as an underrated gem. I think it's already happened, actually. Yeah, I feel it's not one I hear brought up frequently at all. Lenny, cool dick temper. That name every time. Best name. Is is Doshin the Giant a JRPG? No. If not, then bring over the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. I know I can play them on my Steam Deck, but I'm still salty at Square Enix. We deserve a definitive version of these games on the Switch. And I, I don't even yeah. know if the Pixel Remasters are that, really. True. And pro the problem, again, the problem there is you can't mod them once they're on the Switch. So, hmm. Gerber says, I was going to say the near mythical Shining Force 3, but while looking it up, I stumbled onto a wiki about another JRPG during which Linda is kidnapped by Ken's evil brother, Neck. Oh my God, that's just Ken backwards, Jen. Or Jen. <laughs> Jen. I call you Jen, sure. Jeff. So I do have a friend named Jeff. I don't know why I thought I was talking to her all of a sudden. Who wears a creepy mask and works for a pharmaceutical company that makes everyone dress like Santa Claus. What the fuck is it? Linda Cube gets my vote. What the fuck is Linda Cube? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the lady that uh, got all those uh, ladies to say that Bill Clinton uh, sexually harassed them. Uh, 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 Mike, you also said you're uh, your friend, you have a friend named Jeff, and I think you meant to say you have a friend named Jen, and that just knocked me off. Look, <laughs> Linda Cube just broke my brain. Yeah, apparently, okay, fair okay? We're all broken here. It's yeah. Look, I'm a mess. I'm I'm trying to learn more about Linda Cube. This is a Sega Saturn game, of course it was. This looks absolutely banana bonkers. Uh, there's no way this is. Oh man, there there is. It is getting a translate. That's right. Hey, like, hey, hey, you Pika Blue. I was making a Linda Trip joke. Yes. Yeah, that's how old he is. Uh, the Uncharted Wolf says it's insane to me that with the popularity of the series in the East and in the West, that more of the Fire Emblem games haven't been officially localized and put on Switch. Some of the Super Nintendo games are in the online service in Japan, but they're not available in the West and didn't even have a localized version. At the very least, put the 3DS games on Switch or even the GameCube game Path of Radiance on Switch since it's already translated and has the US version go for over $300. Look, I have that on my Oh my GameCube! I don't want the value going down. We might have to keep that one for us. <laughs> wow, Game Boy he's Mikey's. got his. So bring mine. up the ladder. Bring up the ladder. Uh, <laughs> you let men on this lifeboat, right? Okay. <laughs> it shouldn't be this hard to play anime chess, but Nintendo finds a way. Um, the problem is once again, Jeff Conway Pokemon. All of those are possible. We can just remake those at some yeah. point and make some and money. They will. Uh, they will. They they did like translate the first Fire Emblem, which has already been remade. I think one of the Super Nintendo games is even just a remake of that. So uh, and the, there's also the DS remake of the first Fire Emblem. I don't think we're going to get too many more just pure translations of the old games. G-Man Sir says, is Yoshi's Island more of a mainline Mario game or JRPG? If the latter, that's my answer. I'll tell you what, it's more of a mainline Mario game than it is a JRPG. Yes, I will yes. give it that. That is def definitely true. Beef Hammer says, no one said it because it won't happen, but I will. Nintendo, go talk to the CMA and say Sony is to blame for all of our problems. He originally said Series S is to blame for all of our problems, but he crossed that out. Uh, <laughs> say they're terrible and evil and cause the pandemic. In return, Microsoft will port Lost Odyssey. I haven't played it on Xbox because it is extremely long, almost 50 hours, and I would prefer it portably. So this is what should happen. And since Mike just killed my thunder by saying Lost Odyssey while I was typing this, port Final Fantasy 13. It's a terrible game, and Mike deserves to be stuck with it for doing this to me. Jeff should play too. Terrible. It's not terrible. It's I. I do think some point we're gonna get like the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy or something like uh, put onto Switch. Those games actually run very well on Xbox right now because of backward compatibility. Yeah. I think especially 13, like those look fantastic now. They so. should do Final Fantasy 13 Redux and take that entire trilogy and just pare it down into a very like. What they did with the Dragon Ball anime, just take out all the filler. Oh, Kai? You want Final Fantasy 13 Kai? Yeah. Mm. 
I just exposed myself there a little bit by knowing what that is. Uh, yeah, you X did. Core says Parasite Eve on the Switch. Make it happen square. You powers. Lots of weird PlayStation one stuff. That's uh, yeah. Uh, stuck Parasite there. Eve also seemed like a big deal, like Xenogears and Parasite Eve is one that doesn't get brought up very much, even though it felt so massive at the time. <laughs> it of course, was a big deal. Gaming was just much smaller back then. Right. Is that the one where they were really like, there are lesbians in this game and that was the marketing or is that no, something No, that, that was Fear Factor. That's Fear, Fear, yeah, no, Fear Factor's a show. Fear Effect, Fear Effect. Like, fear no, effect, that's a yeah. show. Fear Effect, yeah. No. One of those was the show and one of those was fear the game. Effect, fear yes, Effect, fear Okay, fear. thank you. I got scared. One of them was the shows where you had to eat a spider or something. That one was the lesbian yeah. game. Fear Factor is what I would have said if it was during, we were playing Jeopardy and I was trying to get my brain to remember what the game is called. <laughs> Turbo Sean says, Ooh. now that everyone has their answers in, I'm going to cheat a little to cover our collective asses and say, any JRPG still stuck, still stuck on the 3DS. Games on that platform are becoming awkwardly inaccessible for newcomers since the hardware has been discontinued for a while. Secondhand prices are slowly rising for a variety of reasons, and emulation is generally good but has issues, including just feeling awkward compared to OG hardware. Pretty unrealistic at this point, but porting these games to modern hardware would help preserve them moving forward. I guess I'm partially saying it's because I love Pokemon Sun and Moon, and I'm still salty we never got stars on the Switch. I am still... I just watched a video about this too. I'm still... It's still weird to me that they had that really cool thing with like the third like definitive version and they kind of just stopped doing that like like there was no instead of black and white instead of black instead of gray we got black and white too and even then I was like I kind of just want gray I don't want black and white too uh and then it was really weird with Pokemon X and Y because there was even like a there was like Pokemon that looked like an X and a Y and there was a Pokemon in the game that looked like a Z so I was like okay so we're going to get Pokemon Z and then they just didn't uh so uh sure um there are a lot of good uh, JRPGs still stuck on the 3DS. There actually are rumors of Bravely Default. I think that's why I even brought this up and getting ported at least. I don't know if you ever heard of um, of uh, Radiant Historia, which is I think it's on it. DS and 3DS. Yeah. yeah, people say it has big Chrono Trigger vibes. It's one that's been on my to do list for a while. There's the Shin Megami Tensei 4. It's Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse Tensei. Don't yell at me. I'm I know. Uh, so, yeah, lots of lots of stuff on there. Uh, and hey, you know what though? You could uh, you could get a 3DS for maybe not too much though, and you could mod that thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's really like, that's the, the, still the biggest meme in uh, Splatoon yeah. Three. Is just oh, I'm playing this on a hack 3DS. <laughs> I'm, 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 apparently, these jokes passed me by. I don't really get the reference. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole thing. People yeah. were memeing it like crazy because yeah. uh, I think you know it was a reaction to like the store going offline and, and whatnot. Right. Uh, all right. That's it for that. Uh, next week, somebody suggested this last time. I forget who it was, but uh, we should go do some cover art stuff. So what NES game has your favorite box art? Ooh, good one. I think that'll be fun. I yes. think I have an answer already. So I'll that think about will it. be, yeah, it'll be a good time. Uh, we've got a couple super chats. Why don't we talk about some of the games we've been playing? Then we will look at those. Uh, Jeff, I have been playing Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I... Watch someone play it, and I just got my code when I was doing the uh, uh, the the giant uh, the bomb cast, and I'm just like I gotta go get my switch, and I haven't haven't had time to actually go get it and put in the code and download it, but I'm going to still do that tonight, and I will play some because it looks very fun. It is fun. It's I don't know why it led surprised me so much because the last game was surprising, so I guess I was expecting a certain level of quality here, really, and it delivers. And I I think the move from the tiles to this more sort of like I don't know, circle of movement kind of thing works really well. It does kind of free things up again. It just it feels a little bit less rigid. Uh, yeah. It feels like you can sort of mess around more with things here. In terms of movement, uh, the sparks themselves, since they basically equip abilities, whoever you put them on, it lets you sort of make make builds of characters. Yeah. So you can have like a really melee focused uh, character with, say, Mario Rabbit or somebody that's really all in on the heels. Or you could try to make everybody sort of all roundy. Even just like how much more unique each character feels like Luigi is really that sniper now. Like he has his bow and arrow and that's like sort of his whole thing. That stuff feels really good. Yeah, I um, I I was surprised a little bit to see that they doubled down on the things that were good about the first game. It was a, a game that was really fun to figure out how to get your characters into position. And um, it was um fun to kind of to see the abilities that each character had and do some synergies between them. 
So uh, they have amplified both those things. The movement, or the moving around seems even more interesting and you can really get characters across the map in really fun ways. And it's opened up, like you said. And then um, the, because of the sparks, like you can amplify the synergies within a character and play, you know, do some mid-maxing and making sure that, you know, Bowser's area of effect abilities have all these good things to go with it. Uh, but then, yeah, you could still then pair those synergies up between characters and um, yeah, I, that's it, it. Tickles part of my brain where I'm like, I see the possibilities here, I see a problem, and now I I know I can use this this uh, tool that I have to solve these problems and get out of this turn most mostly unscathed. Um, I'm so ready to play more of this. It's a game that um was never high on my anticip like my anticipation list, but now that it's here, I'm very ready to jump in and play some of it. I, just, just a lot of things about the first one in general. I think it does better. I like that the environments, it almost feels a bit more like Mario Odyssey in terms of you're going to the, the special biomes. You kind of explore around. And so in, the, in Kingdom Battle, the whole aesthetic was very normal Mario. I think I talked about this before. That's that's like rarely my, I it's I really enjoy that. Like I don't like the Mario games that just look like normal ass Mario games. I always prefer it when it gets weirder, like in a Mario Odyssey or it gets kind of specific, like in a Sunshine, as opposed to, playing a new Super Mario uh, Brothers game or e even a little bit of that in 3D World, but they do a pretty good job with that. But a Kingdom Battle, it was such a it looks like you're walking around the Mario like theme park and Universal, right? Like they're following the guidebook on what Mario stuff should look like. Yes. Uh, and here, like th these worlds are, uh, you know, they're not like super crazy. I've been to like the snow area and like this beachy area, but still it feels a bit more original and memorable than just being in like the typical Mario lava area or the typical Mario, you know, grassy area. Yeah. And they, you know, they're this is the second one. So it feels like they have more confidence in experimenting with stuff. So I'm glad that they did. Yeah. So I've been enjoying it a lot. I'm not, uh, I, I got a plate. I didn't beat it, but uh, if you're looking for a recommendation, I think I can give it pretty easily. I'm having a good time with it. So uh, good on them. Uh, uh, Jeff, I've been playing Pilot Wing 64 uh, also. Have you uh, tried the, that since it's been added to NSO? No, I, I'm actually having trouble getting my Switch away from my kids. Uh, oh, is, no. Yeah, so, uh, but I do want to play. I love I love Pilot Wings. I specifically like Pilot Wing 64. I spent a lot of time with this game on the N64. I think its music is very fun and weird and jazzy, and I'm glad they played that up in the trailer. Um, but, yeah, how, how are you finding it? Great. I mean, I, I always liked that game. Uh, it, it was it was like the best case for games going 3D, maybe even more so than Mario, which Mario is a better game, 64. But they basically had to, like, refigure a lot of stuff out here. This one's great because you could just kind of see the ideas that we had to sort of jerry rig together with, like, duct tape and glue with Mode 7 and Pilot Wings and Super Nintendo. Now it's like, now it's just 3D. <laughs> now yep. this shit is just easy to do. And it's a lot of fun. It's oddly peaceful, yet it's still creative. Like, they still have you do wacky things, like shoot a giant robot. Um, just kind of going around that island's uh, fun. It has very good vibes. Uh, and the, the kind of neat thing here is that this, you know, there's been troubles with emulation. Here, this just runs better than it did before. It's at a higher frame rate. It looks sharper. Uh, it, it seems like the most, imp most impressive kind of emulation job that we've had on NSO so far. Yeah, that's that's fantastic to hear. I'm uh, I will also check that out. I'll, I mean, I want to hop in there, play a bunch of those N64 games that I've uh, been kind of slacking on going back to. But Pilot Wing 64 is one I won't wait because I I just like uh, I I remember trying to perfect those missions and playing them over and over and getting pretty good at it. And um, I, that that was at a time when they were still figuring stuff out, including how difficult and accurate of a simulation should we make this stuff? And of course, it's not mm -hmm. like a perfect sim. But they definitely err on the side of this should be challenging and you should feel like you're in control and we're not going to sort of uh, cheat your way into faking the stuff. No, you have to be in control and actually uh, accurately land these things in these spaces. Uh, and you, you should understand how things are going to like your decisions are going to affect how you fly through the air. Uh, and it's not going to be like, oh, if I just kind of follow the path that the game wants me to follow, I'll get close enough. It's not like that at all. And I appreciate that era of 3d gaming because it's mostly gone by the wayside absolutely so uh jeff is it you're talking about you can't get your switch away from the kids are they is it time to be getting them their own this christmas yeah i i definitely have um handed them the switch light that has the broken right analog stick it doesn't click in and everything else works uh -huh. 
uh, and say, hey, play on this. But now they both just want to play at the same time. So, mm-hmm. And they, they still really like playing on the TV. I'm like, yeah, you uh, it's a handheld. It's so much better than you have to like take over the TV. That's but, interesting, actually. Yeah. Like to play on the TV. They really little... like playing on the TV. Yeah. Um, mm. So I, I think they just like that. It's big and it's loud and it takes up the whole room. And I think they just uh, they find that fun. Um, but they still need a lot of help. So I'm playing a lot of uh, Super Mario, you know, three, Super Mario 3D World, Bowser's Fury. Still I'm getting a lot of that stuff in. I, the problem is, if I get them their own beyond these two, uh, I'm all digital. How do I do yeah, the game? Yeah, like, that's... The game sharing between two works pretty well. I've got that sorted. If I introduce a third one, I'm kind of, I'm starting to talk about rebuying games, whether they mm-hmm. are physical or digital at that point. I can't just like say, oh, there's the cartridge. You can use that right now. And I still don't want to be in that world, but it's not. I, boy, I wish Nintendo had family sharing figured out. AJ kind of complains about that, too, because, like, a new game will come out, like, you know, some new Sonic game. He's like, I almost don't want the kids to know, because it's like, eh, I don't mind buying a game, but I'll have to, like, buy three copies of this game. And they're like, I want to play it, too. So, yeah, it kind of kind of does get ridiculous uh, anymore. It was, you know, sharing was a lot easier. And it was just, here's this TV. And, like, we all understood, like, well, of course, only one of us can play at a time. There's only one console anyways. But yeah. now... You even got your own, you all got your own bullshit. I mean, it was a little bit like that back in the Game Boy, but even then, it was basically just Pokemon was the only one we had to ha- each have our own of. Yeah, and that was you know the Game Boy was laser targeted, ninety dollars as for the system, and the games were thirty dollars. I mean, yeah, sure, that was worth more back then, but it was significantly less than the other games on the market even at that time. It was twenty dollars less than uh, most any or NES and Super Nintendo games. So it just um. Uh, it was a, it's an easier sell and now we are talking about games that pretty much cost as much as anything else and getting th- three copies of a switch game that adds up fast it sure does and we can wait for them to go on sale jeff uh, <laughs> yeah i wonder if that's like if that could be the thing like of course they won't go on sale I wonder if we'll get a point it's like hey you're buying one copy of smash Bros. you can immediately buy another one right now for half off or something like that yeah or if yeah, that would ever be a yeah, thing maybe Maybe not, though. Uh, Probably not. Uh, all right, then. Uh, well, Tim says, get them on Roblox. It keeps them away from the good systems. I'll tell you what. My, my nieces, they love that Roblox stuff. That's true. Get them just iPads. See, I'm, 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 conf- I'm impressed by the TV thing, because all my nephews and nieces, they, they, their iPad or their Switch, the portable, is good enough they, for them. They're they really like they really are playing on the tablets, but uh, it's been, I want to play this, and I want to play it on the TV. And Emmy wants to play Sackboy on the TV, and... Um, and when they want to play Mario, sometimes playing on the Switch handheld is good enough. But if they have the opportunity, they want to play on the TV. And I even if they're you already her... playing handheld, they're like, hey, can you set this up on the TV for me? Yeah. I guess. I can't believe you let them play Sackboy. Don't they know that you're supposed to hate PlayStation or something? Yeah, no, I, I always tell them, like, now this is worse. This is no <laughs> Mario. And it's definitely no Halo Infinite. I always still make sure they know that. <laughs> now this is worse. <laughs> uh uh, Jeff, do you want to uh, uh, bring up these a uh, couple of these super chats that we got? I do. Uh, let's see here. Um, Rack uh, Rack SX three uh, gave us a one dollar super chat, and then sent in another one and said, uh, "Predict Gotham Knights' hypothetical performance if it were coming to Switch." Uh, yeah, uh, thirty frames per second, but it was just like one twenty p. Just 120 pixels. Just, that's, it. That's, that's it. Yeah. That's it looks like a did. Game Boy camera uh, screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, Hitch uh, uh, says, what do you think the 2023 PlayStation PC lineup is? Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, one for sure. Um, fucking, uh, what's the one that, Returnal? Returnal. And I'm not, I'm not going to say, because every time that comes up, I get fucking weirdos at me i was gonna say Bloodborne. spider-man 2 you're gonna say spider-man 2 no, already I was gonna say, no i i don't i don't think any big game like that's gonna do day and date that's Bloodborne, it. though yeah probably not but probably not but it's a total guess everybody uh yeah they gotta do something with Bloodborne eventually again like yep. i said i always feel that these things are never gonna happen then then they do oh did last of us part one get a pc version like well that that might happen huh yeah that will happen that Especially, one should be a faster turn honestly around, yeah the think. last of us part one and two might comes a collection to PC next year. Yeah, there you go. That makes a lot of sense, actually. The last of Us, both parts. Yeah, last, that's a that'd be a fantastic name. The Last of Us, both parts. Last of Us, all the parts. All right, Jeff. Uh, I think that just about does it. 
Hey, we did. Oh, Nick Turbo says they already said they would? Oh, I don't remember that. That sounds uh, familiar, but I, I, who could keep it straight anymore? Who can? Who can? All right. Thanks for listening, everybody, to Last of the Nintendogs. You can find uh, more of us on the Game Mess YouTube channel. Join our Discord. I don't know why I'm forgetting anything I'm supposed to say here all of a sudden. But, uh, Jeff, what are you up to? Uh, bomb stuff. Giant bomb stuff. Uh, yeah, bomb stuff. I should always be yelling bomb stuff. Yeah, you guys we'll are going to be live reacting to that Silent Hill thing with Jess tomorrow, right? That's yes, going to be will. wild. And then the Resident Evil thing on Thursday and the voicemail dump truck. Um, and UPF will be this week. I think we got, I really wanted to do it last week. We were going to play Grounded, but then I went to Niagara Falls instead. Um, they did the that's New okay. York Times they played the crossword puzzle, and that, that was, was pretty really, fun. It actually. was really fun. They had a, that was, was a good thing. It was fun to watch and listen to while I was driving. But yeah, just go to giantbomb.com. Uh, uh, .com? .com. Yeah. I'm banned. <laughs> <laughs>